What is up, everyone, and welcome to The WAN Show. I was up until 5 a.m. two times this week <laughs> and about 3.30 last night, so the energy might be a little lower. And highly but trained. we've got a great show for you guys today. We're going to be talking about NVIDIA's recent assertion that native resolution gaming is dead. Long live DLSS. And... Oh, I don't know if I can argue with them about this. There was a massive Xbox leak revealing plans for consoles, controllers, games, and dreams of acquisitions. What else we got to talk about this week? Microsoft announces Copilot for the 78th time or something around there. I'm not entirely sure. And a, a video that came out recently that was actually quite fantastic. The mom and pop computer shop video that came out yesterday. Was that yesterday? Wait, that's a topic? We're going to talk about some of the behind the scenes stuff. Oh, fun. All right. Let's yeah. go ahead and roll that intro. Yeah, they're still totally screwed up. The show is brought to you today by Corsair, The Ridge, and AG1. Let's jump right into our first topic. Yesterday, NVIDIA officially released DLSS 3.5. So far, it's only supported in Cyberpunk 2077 and Creative Tool Chaos Vantage. But DLSS 3.5 kind of cool it adds ray reconstruction which uses a supercomputer trained ai network so buzzwords an ai network yeah then. <laughs> cool um to generate higher quality pixels in between sampled rays by recognizing lighting patterns from training data and recreating them during play. Huh. NVIDIA claims an 8% frame rate boost in Cyberpunk 2077 over DLSS Whoa. 3 and also claims that it is less demanding on the GPU, though that has not been quantified. This is, this is wild, though. In response to a question about whether NVIDIA plans to prioritize native resolution performance in GPUs, Brian Catanzaro... Sure. NVIDIA's VP of Applied Deep Learning Research stated that relying on brute power to improve graphical fidelity is a suboptimal solution when Moore's law no longer seems to hold. Instead, the future of gaming graphics will be a greater reliance on AI-assisted rendering and upscaling. According to Catanzaro, smarter technologies like DLSS need to be implemented to improve graphics fidelity and circumvent the otherwise low gen-on-gen -gen performance improvements seen in today's graphics hardware. This is a quote, I think. Yep, DLSS AI will eventually be able to replace traditional rendering entirely. Now, I think there's a ton for us to unpack here because first of all looking at it from a right now today perspective i think it's fair to say that most gamers would strongly prefer to just render at native resolution and have an identical experience every time the game is rendered accurately no matter what hardware they're on right and it just all comes down to well how well optimized is your hardware but I would actually, okay, there's, there's a few things that I want to kind of bring up as, uh, as sort of a, 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 a devil's advocate sort of argument. Um, but, yeah. I mean, do you think that's fair to say? Most gamers would rather just game at native res. Not necessarily. Um, uh, I, I think I would be a little bit sketched out if I was a competitive player. Trying to put something sure. that's going to potentially... Like, uh, yeah, it seems pretty good most of the time. But maybe it, it doesn't show me the thing that I need, need to see perfectly the one time I need to see it. Right, because you might actually be aiming at a pixel. Yeah. So, like, uh, I don't know. But if I'm playing single-player games, I don't, I don't know how much I care. As long as it looks really good, it's probably fine. You know? So... Here's and and I I mean I think we can see from the uh... not just sorry not just aiming at a pixel either, and oh maybe this kind of ruins the competitive game argument, um, but uh, also like pixel perfect jumps, pixel perfect timings sure. in various you could be competitive in a single player game that sure. you're trying speed to speed runs or speed something runs like that in or yep. something yeah 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 
Um, all right. Now here's here's before you guys before you guys get too far ahead. Um, oh, do we have a problem? I'm trying to figure that out. Seems like maybe just float plane back. Not sure. Okay, cool. Uh, before we before we get too far ahead of ourselves here. Here's, I, I, at least seems like the chat is mostly on the same page as, as my sort of perception of the situation. They would rather not rely on these AI upscaling or, or machine learning solutions. But can I just make a, make a small point? In game development, how often is it that we are seeing hacky solutions that are implemented in order for us to achieve playable frame rates? You know, whether it's, um, man, I remember doing this, uh, going down this rabbit hole into how uh, reflections in the scope of a rifle are done in traditional gaming versus uh, path traced or ray traced gaming, where the kind of hacky solution where they're, they're they basically create, I, f I forget exactly what it was, but um, the, the way that they could do that with a minimal performance impact and still have it seem relatively accurate, just absolutely blew my mind um what is the what is the difference there that's kind of my question to you what's the difference if it's implemented at a driver level by an nvidia or an amd versus if it's implemented game by game in order to optimize the game your thoughts yeah it reflects a pre-rendered image is at least one of the techniques for that I don't know. I something that concerns me about a lot of this kind of stuff too is like what we saw with Starfield. I know I'm like giving kind of a politician answer, so I'm not answering the question that you asked. Um, I, I'm still going to ask you but, to answer the question. I but, asked. But sure, go ahead. But, um, but like we we saw that come out without DLSS, right? And sure, the community was able to respond that time. Um, and there was a paid solution, and then there was free solutions, and then now uh, Bethesda said that they're gonna bring native DLSS to Starfield and that's cool and whatever sounds good. Um, but if if the quote that I heard that kind of spooked me a little bit of DLSS slash AI will eventually be able to replace traditional rendering entirely, like uh, that sounds like we're going to run into a lot of issues. Um, I feel like that would that would bring problems in in relation to like abandoned wear dead games that you can't play anymore because there's like some weird thing going on with how it was expected to work at one point in time but now our current rendering paths are different um i also think uh that there's a lot of potential for really not cool combat between the various companies that have their various sure. proprietary solutions that yep. are trying to sponsor a game and then they try to, you know, line pockets to get them to not actually include certain solutions. So it's basically unplayable on whatever graphics card. And then like the performance difference between brands ends up being really dramatic depending on sure. uh, the company and the partnership that they had with the GPU company, uh, stuff like I that. I mean, whether the anti-competitive stuff happens or not, it's not like we haven't seen similar things in the past. And I just don't, I don't necessarily know if it's going to be any different than, you know, your Tress FX and your Hairworks and your PhysX and all the different things that we've seen over the years. Um, and can I just, can I again play devil's advocate again here and say, okay, but what if the AI assisted version is just legitimately better? Seeing what they can do with the amount of die area on a modern GPU that is dedicated to this machine learning processing, um, going through these, going through these like these these trained models, um, if they if that advances at a faster rate than just raw GPU grunt, I mean, could we see a game developer be able to design like this? You remember this, right? Nvidia Canvas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, this wasn't being done in real time at, you know, 60 to, you know, 500 frames per second when they first showed it off. But I think it's pretty clear that in the machine learning space, we're seeing a development or an advancement curve that is much faster than traditional GPU raster rendering. 
So with that in mind, is this a better way? I think it kind of already is because even with uh, 3.0. Because we're already we're already in a situation where we are it's it's clear that 4K is kind of the final frontier for you to have any hope of high refresh rate gaming. I just I don't I don't foresee and, and you know what? I'm probably gonna end up eating these words at some point, but I don't foresee a reason. I don't foresee any need for us to drive games at significantly higher resolutions than that natively because you have so much data to process at 4K that you could upscale it, not infinitely, but wow, a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just the, 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 just the general improvements that you get from it are something that we've recommended people use for quite a while now. So like... Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. So okay. So I see. I see. Four K is that much better now. Basically, the the end of that, which is almost a kind of an argument against my point, in that if we're not trying to push resolution higher, well, then the obvious answer is to push visual fidelity higher. But then, looking at um, oh shoot, yeah, Star Starfield. What what's that technique called where they 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 actually scanned real objects in order to get the the texture quality super high? Sorry, say again. They scanned real world objects in yeah, order. Uh, I feel like Dan is going to know photo something. Um, hey, photogrammetry. Hey, photogrammetry. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So if you could, if you could just create all of your in-game assets with photogrammetry, and then just r run basically almost like. Uh, Almost like a uh, like a mocap sort of equivalent, like or or like a proxy footage equivalent, where you're actually rendering with markers essentially, and then your GPU is just interpreting. It's almost like compressing the entire asset library of the game in a sense. Oh. Like you kind of get what I mean, right? Yeah, but because that, that we're coming back to this, that seems even more concerning for multiplayer games. And like, I, sure. There's there's been this like what about destructible environments in multiplayer games using that setup? Oh. As long as you well actually, hold on. That could be a way to make destructible environments manageable from a performance standpoint. Because if you've got this material and you've assigned characteristics to it, then all you need to okay. do So the ge geometry isn't done that way. Yeah, so you like can, all textures. you have now you can sit, spend all that compute on geometry, and then the the exactly the textures or like the unique scarring of the surface or whatever. Yeah, that might differ from one player to the next, but it'll be probably reasonably close until you know someone discovers that if you wear like a like a to an all an all like um, blacked out you know, suit or something like that. And you happen to stick close to like where explosions where you can hide or something, you know, I'm, but <laughs> what's the difference, Luke? People are already, People are already exploiting kind of everything stuff. anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's just a new thing to do, right? Like, you know, don't, don't pretend, you know, your hands are totally clean. I see you and Joe playing Tarkov with your second monitor with your discord, <laughs> seeing each other's viewpoint. Like, that's not technically the way it's meant to be played, but realistically, everybody else who's squatted up is doing it anyway. So, okay, fine. Then at a certain point, it's not like uh, uh, unfair. It's uh, uh, get good. Yeah. If you don't don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah, I just see like, dress in black. Sometimes you'll see engine demos, and yeah. those engine demos will like look really sick. The fidelity will be super high. Yeah. Um, but then you you start kind of diving more into it. And you start figuring out like, okay, uh, creative modding f from the community in this engine is like not going to be a thing for X Y Z reason. Um, none of these environments are destructible. Uh, if you if you look at these environments in different angles, it starts to break down in pretty bad ways. Like different things like that. Sure. And I I think I'm my concern if we go away from like. The, the, just the statement of replacing traditional rendering keeps getting me concerned about like the technology that we've already built for traditional rendering. Abandoning that and going forward, I feel like is going to have pitfalls that we don't necessarily understand, that I don't understand. 
um, in regards to the, the games that we can necessarily make. Maybe I'm just completely wrong about this. That sounds good to me. Hopefully that's right. But I mean, uh, I think once we resolve a lot of the copyright and intellectual property ownership issues around AI generated assets, um, if anything, I... And I mean, maybe I'm just coming at this from a layperson's perspective, right? Like, I don't do game development, but honestly, it seems to me a lot easier. Yeah, probably. Like, if I easier, yeah, but is it is it as good of a space to be creative in? That's the thing that I'm concerned about. I guess it's it depends what kind of creativity you want. Like, uh, you know, I think we've we've talked before about like if I if I was to, you know, invest in making a game. You know what kind of what kind of game would it be? And honestly, if if I was to if I was to spec out my dream game that I would make, it would be episodic. Even though I know the business model is totally broken and doesn't work, um, it would be it would be heavily heavily story focused. Like I could see, okay, there were these like kind of uh, kind of trashy like fantasy novels that I read when I was in, like a teenager uh, by this author Terry Brooks, and it's all about this um, this like fantasy world, Shannara, um, and I could I could honestly, it's all just like adventuring all over this land, um, and I could I could see a game like that where you instead of hiring game writers necessarily, you hire writers writers like. And just create this world that gradually opens up and with every episode creates more and more environments to you, for you to go and visit. And Essentially an MMO, but not... You really got to play Baldur's Gate. Massively multiplayer. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> 100%. Um, you're, you're really nicely defining Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> well, that's, that's great. Um, one difference, though, is that nothing... I, I wouldn't intend anything to be high fidelity. So I, for from my point, looks really good. Yeah. From my point of view, I had almost zero interest. Like I was thinking, like um, like RPG Maker level of uh, of of graphical yeah. fidelity. Yeah, like yeah. it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. But if I could, if I could, just, you know, draw a stick figure, and then say, okay, yeah you know that now and now it just Make looks that good something cool so, you, and, so you're talking about basically lowering barrier of entry yes don't have to be as much of a, a a coder don't have to be as much of a designer or reallocating resources because i think that's something that we've mostly agreed upon for a long time that a lot of the time the 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 things that games get wrong is they'll have these really cool technical details or they'll be absolutely you know beautiful but it's not actually fun but it's not it's not fun it's yeah. not engaging the triple a curse or this or the, like the story sucks and you just yeah. you know your sidekick dies and you're like so you were just a, a three-dimensional or array even worse of than pixels. that you're like, like oh thank goodness now they're not going to bug me anymore yeah so, thank thank gravy i don't have to do another uh, Shut up, escort Sarah. escort quest yeah <laughs> exactly so i mean i don't know we've got people in chat saying i want graphical fidelity or i'm not interested yeah but you can get you can get that yeah yeah, that's the thing. I no, mean, part, no part of what he's saying is that you wouldn't get that. What he's saying is that when he's making it, he doesn't have to worry about that. Yeah. He can he can draw stick figures, he can do whatever, and then it's going to turn that into something more. Um, but again, you know, there's all this intellectual property stuff to to figure out. Oh yeah, definitely. I I, I don't know when or how or if that's going to be resolved. I suspect it will be, but yeah, when, how, or if is is pretty questionable um it's an interesting thing because it's it's cool that more people the more things are more accessible with it but then it's also not cool uh taking people's jobs away and also it, you know it's real good at getting something that's going to be acceptable to a decent amount of people but it's yeah. not real good at making masterpieces no that's fair that's totally fair. And like I, I, there's, there's this old story of where is it? Austria is that where Beethoven's from? Austria? Can't remember. Wherever he's from, there's, if I remember correctly, it's a, it's a, this could just be not even a true story. So, 
great. <laughs> Watch it. Here, here uh, comes fake, fake story time. Totally with Luke. might be. Totally might be. I'm really glad that I we heard have a this show like for this. forever ago. It might have even been a different uh, composer. Yeah, I don't okay, know. Okay, so you don't know who, <laughs> you don't know where. I don't know. If you it's don't true. know exactly when. You have no idea if it's true. Why don't we just say Luke's about to make up a story? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's okay, go with tell that. us a story. Um, but it was basically every every school in yeah. that country had a grand piano. Yeah. Because they're like, you never know when the next version. In of- Luke's fictional country. Okay. Yes. Ca- carry on. <laughs> every every school had a grand piano because they were they wanted the opportunity for if if another person like this came around. Um, mm-hmm. that they would be able to realize it. Okay, cool. That's a really neat idea. Yeah. There was a massive Xbox leak that revealed plans for consoles, controllers, games, and dreams of acquisitions this week. And the amount of clickbait that I saw around this has been absolutely colossal. Like, I, I clicked on this one article that was like, Microsoft planned to acquire Nintendo. Yeah. And as I'm reading through the article, I'm sitting here going, No. That's not what happened at all. Yeah. I, like, I, 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 I clicked it because I went, well, surely they couldn't be stupid enough to think that like, the, the government of Japan and Nintendo itself would, w- what, for, for money, like sell out to Microsoft? Like, they're, they're, it's, it's, not even, it's not even conceivable. And I was like, sure, surely they couldn't have gotten too far into these talks. No, there were there were no talks. There was no there was no Microsoft Nintendo acquisition. That all, all uh, who 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 said it was it was it Phil Spencer? I don't remember. But someone basically said that would be a career defining moment or something like that. Well, yeah, it would. That would be an industry defining moment if Nintendo has been around for like what 150 years or whatever it is. Hey, Linus. Got what? Wouldn't it be sick if we acquired Mr. Beast. Yeah, yeah. There. So news, 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 news. Here comes the Dexerto article. <laughs> yeah. You know, Linus almost acquired Mr. Oh, Beast. Almost. Beast Industries. Almost. Yeah, exactly. Almost happened. Fe- feastables, more like tech tippables. <laughs> <laughs> That's our new chocolate bar, the Quick Bits. That's not bad. Uh, we we we've Quick Bits for like a bagged snack. It, we wanted to do a cereal at one point. That'd be pretty good. I know. It's a really good name for a cereal. Oh. Yeah. Dang. We also have um we wow. also have uh Linus cat tips. Quick in, bites and quick bits. In yeah. the production in the production queue. Do you know what Linus cat tips are? No. Okay, so I want to make like a cat teaser. Oh a cat toy, yeah. And then it would have interchangeable tips and they'd be <laughs> doesn't doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. I'm really sorry. Anyway, a Microsoft employee appears to have mistakenly uploaded a large trove of confidential documents, both redacted and unredacted, to a legal court website used in the trial between the FTC and Microsoft. This has resulted in what is possibly the largest leak of Xbox-related information to date, most of it from 2020 and onward. On the hardware side, Project Brooklyn was a diskless Xbox Series X refresh and Project Elwood, an equivalent Series S console that were scheduled to launch in fall 2024. Oh, I shouldn't say was. Uh, I mean, maybe. Anything leaked could be, could not be. You never know. Things can things can be developed really quickly sometimes, and projects that seem like they're just about across the line can get axed, so who knows. A next-gen hybrid cloud console that uses both local and cloud processing is scheduled allegedly for 2028 that is actually farther out than i expected really yeah i i mean looking at how hard they were pushing uh looking at how hard they were pushing the cloud with xbox series x i thought it sounded like they're going to do this with series x yeah. yeah sebile an elite style controller with haptics that double as speakers a lift-to-wake feature and direct-to-cloud connectivity similar to Stadia. Man, this is cool. Uh, one document showed a mock-up of a first-party Xbox handheld, but handheld was listed as not in scope for first-party on what can only be described as a funding pyramid. What? Huh? Interesting. 
not in scope for first party. So what? They would allow an ecosystem of Xbox handhelds, like kind of Logitech G Cloud kind of thing, or maybe that. Yeah. Oh, that'd be that'd be super cool. And what 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 else? What else we got here? Uh, oh, however, the Keystone Cloud Console is in the funded section, despite being canceled last year before this document was generated. Okay, so take all of these leaks with a grain of salt, but definitely cool stuff. Then on the gaming side, uh, Bethesda parent company Zenimax had a planning document listing several upcoming games, yeah. including a Doom game called Year Zero, Dishonored 3, a Ghostwire Tokyo sequel, an Indiana Jones game. Ah. <sighs> That, what, the Indiana Jones game? Yeah, is that what the Psy was for? Yeah, that'll either be amazing or more likely kind of terrible. Probably trash, yeah. Yeah, probably yeah, yeah. terrible. I mean, you never know. I mean, I didn't have a lot of hope for the 2016 Tomb Raider reboot. Yeah, and that was actually very good. It ended up being excellent. It's it's one of the few games in the like at that time in my life when I was very busy that I actually played all the way through. It was very good. A lot a lot of movie tie-in games are not good. Um, I, Did I you do... just call Tomb Raider a movie tie-in game? Is it not? I didn't play the ones when we were really young. Was there no like super old school Tomb Raider movie? I know the newer Tomb Raider movie was not good, but I thought those were like remakes of some super old thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quietly ask you to leave. I don't know. Honestly, I just don't care. Um, but I was gonna say Spider-Man. My actual point wasn't Tomb Raider, it was Spider-Man came out and was actually surprisingly good. I thought That's that was going to be That's also not adapted from a movie. Uh, yeah, it is, actually. Obviously, originally, there's the comic books, but I'm pretty sure the game is based on the movie, is yeah, it not? Yeah, 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 so nice try, awesome. bucko. Um, sort of. Moving on from... Not sort of. It's specifically pulled from the movie. People are so mad. <laughs> I'm totally oh twisting goodness. what he's saying to yes, make it so is. much worse than it and is. And they just dove right with you. I'm just glad awesome. they're mad at you for a change. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, I'll take that. That's, <laughs> that's, I'll take that, too, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on from there, there's remasters of Oblivion and Fallout 3, uh, which... The, the remaster... Yeah, the Oblivion... Get over the Oblivion it. movie. The Oblivion movie. The Oblivion movie, yeah. Yeah, it's based no, on Obliv the... Oblivion's it's, a comic it's book. It's based on what the, El the Elder Scrolls, yeah, graphic novel it's series. It's called The Elder Scrolls. It's from a comic. It's from a scroll. Yeah. A lot of them. They're yeah. old. They're Multiple elder. scrolls. Come on. Um, Buried you know, in a vault. The the move to remaster Oblivion, I honestly think, is really weird. Um, really? Because, Why? Because of Sky Oblivion. And I honestly bet you hmm. at this point, Sky Oblivion will be better than the Oblivion remaster. So then they just issue a cease and desist? <sighs> so that they can sell Oblivion remastered? I think that would be honestly hard for them to do. Because it's a mod of Skyrim. Given how given how <sighs> precarious their relationship with the modding community seems to be, I think that would be. like kill it. Yeah, because I, this this has been such an incredibly long running project from people that are seen as very good members of the community. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I think that would be really bad. But to me, like the especially because Sky Oblivion is the furthest along one because there's. Uh, what is the what is the Morrowind called? Morrowind one called? Elijah's Skywind? in the chat. Boomer Scrolls. Wow, cool. Stop. Um, yeah, Skywind is the is the Morrowind version of that project, which, as far as my understanding goes, is not anywhere near as far along as the it's um, probably Oblivion more challenging. Ones. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, business stuff from executive emails. Uh, by at least 2020, Microsoft apparently had write-ups outlining the potential value of acquiring Nintendo and Valve, though they apparently saw no means to do so. Uh, yeah. Um, they were likewise interested in purchasing the U.S. branch of TikTok and Warner Brothers Interactive. Uh, Phil Spencer said acquiring Nintendo would be a career moment. Okay, so it was Phil Spencer. Uh, there's confirmation that Microsoft is primarily interested in Activision Blizzard for King, the makers of Candy Crush. How sad is that? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's worse, yeah. the fact that Activision Blizzard has fallen so far that we don't care about IPs like Diablo or Warcraft compared to Candy Crush, 
or the fact that gaming has or at least the the money made in gaming has shifted so heavily to mobile like whale whale harpooning games like Candy Crush um that I think that's the worst part that that those that that traditional model is not really interesting at an executive you know return for shareholders uh, level anymore that's wow yeah honestly the the heights that blizzard fell from and the heights that activision fell from are both like incredible both of those studios were just like top of the freaking world and have totally fallen off so that's a big part of it um i think the the games that they've been releasing are are pathetic shadows of what they used to <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know um but also yeah people eat into that model so like it's i, I don't even know what you say at this point because gamers are gonna buy stuff it just happens in one exchange, Activision execs described the Nintendo Switch 2 as closer in power to last-gen PS4 and Xbox One, which makes a lot of sense. Have you seen the recent rumors that the Switch 2 will be as powerful as a PS5 or an Xbox Series X? No. What are you talking about? That's not how that works. If it is a mobile device, which, as far as I can tell, most people seem to be indicating that it will be a Switch 2 a direct sequel, kind of like the Super Nintendo or the Wii U, right? What could possibly make you think it will have anywhere near... In the same article, I'm reading, I'm reading people who are saying it will be based on NVIDIA's Ampere architecture, and it will be a mobile device... And it will have the same performance as a PlayStation. What, the, what are you talking about? Oh my God, Conrad just said it's going to be called the Switch U just to make it extra confusing. That would be amazing. I would love that. I should just call it Switch Off at that point because no one's going to tune into that. Forget it. Got him. Like the, I feel like I feel like this is the same conversation <laughs> that we had back when Tesla announced that every one of their cars that they had that they were shipping would be capable of full autonomous driving. <laughs> And I'm sitting here going, look, I don't know everything about everything. Certainly not. I, I, there's lots of things I don't know or, or don't understand the intricacies of. But one of the things that I do know is that at that time, microprocessor technology, even if, even if Tesla was five years ahead of the competition, there was no, there was no roadmap to the kind of, the kind of AI inferencing that we were going to need for full self-drive. Like, because remember, self-driving, full autonomous operation is not 99% of the time or 99.9% .9 of the time. Think about it. If it was 99% accurate in 100 hours, you would spend one hour doing the wrong thing. On the road, that is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. 99.9% .9 of the time, if it was that good, every thousand hours, you could be spending an hour driving down the wrong side of the road or on the sidewalk or a more minor error. There are, yeah, there are, there are a little bit of, there are some issues with interpreting it that way. But it's also not that wrong. Yes, but I would say if you, if you evaluate it, so, okay, you're right. And based on how that thing is laid out, there's no way to know how that should be interpreted because you don't know the severity of these errors. Yes. But looking at like people driving down the road, what percentage of the time are they doing the wrong thing uh, by looking somewhere incorrectly or just absentmindedly, like sure. not really seeing what's in front of them, stuff like that. It's probably extremely high, but they're probably also not driving down the wrong side of the road. Like you're giving for an example, and there's no way to differentiate those levels of errors. That's with true. The That's statistic true. That we had. And, and, and we, we don't know for sure if, like you said, humans are making, are, are, are spending, you know, yeah, one, one out of every hundred or one out of every thousand hours, like completely doing the wrong thing. I, you know, yeah. people run red lights. It happens. People fall asleep at the wheel. Yep. A hundred percent. I think what we can all agree on is that, um, Meg's, uh, 1991 says in the float plane chat, Luke thinks Mario Bros is based on a movie. 
<laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know how. I just don't know how you got it so wrong, Luke. It's Tomb Raider. Who cares? Why? Why does anyone care? Horny this much? thirteen year olds care. <laughs> I was. You like, don't like pyramids, Luke? When, when did the first Tomb Raider game poke come your out? eye out? There's Tomb Raider. I just hold it up. Raider game release. What was I like five or something? When did it come out? Two hundred gold is nineteen ninety eight. All right, so I was nineteen ninety six in October. So I was five. Could have been a movie. I don't know. Why do I care? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you were a precocious youngster and already a pyramid enthusiast. <laughs> I do. I, honest, I might have been at that point. I'm not sure. You, I, well, you either recently were, or you were going to be one soon. You know. <laughs> it is interesting that there's a bit of a gap there. Yeah. 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 So we ended up um, <laughs> talking about nursing <laughs> Luke. I'm sure nobody had that on their bingo. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is pretty interesting. Someone in Float Plane Chat linked me um, uh, one of the leaked versions. That, oh, this isn't working anymore since we oh. restarted. Ah, uh, Stream Deck's broken. Can't there. show you my laptop, but it's uh, one of the leaked documents. Um, it says gaming. There's a picture of Master Chief because, of course, there is. Uh, and then it says gaming devices. Oh, there we go. Yeah, gaming devices passed to 2030. Console business is the foundation. Damn it, Microsoft. Uh, consoles are considered a key health meter for the brand and will continue to drive majority of revenue and subscribers into 2030. Um, wow. New endpoints are the... So I feel the, very unimportant right now. Yeah, me too. This is the interesting part, though. Is like they kind of shift immediately after saying that. So they say, consoles are the foundation. This is the health meter, all that kind of stuff. And then they say, like... To get to 100 million members, though, unlocking new off-console endpoints and improving the experience will substantially grow subscribers over the next eight years. Okay, so which one is it, Microsoft? Exactly. That's an interesting, That's a bad presentation. interesting point. To be fair, I think they're saying it's the foundation, this is our majority, that type of stuff, but we need to... Right. So they're saying that to build a pyramid, <laughs> they have to have a lot of consoles, yeah. and then they have to have a sharp point of endpoints. Yeah. And then they turn it on the side. Yeah. And, and they have two, two of them. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> controller controller becomes the hero is point number three. The new Xbox okay. controller is the only thing you'll need to play on a on every new device. This new low barrier of entry will fuel subscriber growth. Mm -hmm. um, so subscriber growth. So they're just talking about like Game yeah, Pass. Yeah, that's it. That's all they care about. That's it. Game Pass, baby. Yeah. Personalization and customization, personalization and customization continue as a hardware strategic advantage and a key profit driver and customer delighter. Never heard of that word before, but it sounds good. Yeah, I've heard like delighting customers being yeah, but delighter. a customer delighter. Yeah, I don't know if I've heard of a customer delighter before, but I also don't spend a ton of time in gentlemen's clubs. So Yeah, yeah, or pyramids. Um, pyramids sustainability and accessibility continued progress towards uh reduction of carbon tax impact re-energizing yep. our journey of inclusion personalization it's interesting to me that they would think that personalization is a strength of xbox they do um no it doesn't you got to send us back there we go they do they do push their custom controllers a lot yeah but why and not honestly i think a lot of people buy them why not the console though customization of the console itself yeah like look at how sony's doing with the uh, with the playstation the 5 uh, dark plates or whatever their yeah. first party one is called the the d brand thing uh. like i um <laughs> avon fox says tomb raider was a pyramid scheme yeah that's how they made money it, it kind of was it was it kind of what yeah yeah. yeah yeah um yeah that's interesting I don't really, you know, shop for Xbox as much. I don't even think they've done much in the way of but themed just, Xboxes this time around. Like we had this, all black? we had this super cool, uh, like Gears Xbox One X. That was sick. Or was it a One S? I don't remember. But I yeah, I have one of those actually. Yeah, let's. Does, did you steal it from work? No. Oh, okay. How'd you get? Why, why the hell do you have an it's, Xbox? It's a long story. I turned it on one time. I'm interested in the it's story. It's still under my TV though. But I would I, like to hear. I turned about, it on. I'd once. like to hear the story. I wanted the controller. 
So we found his weakness. We found the thing that will make Luke oh, spend no, 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 money. No, no, oh. no, no, I didn't buy it. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Carry on. I wanted the controller, so I had the the red. I should have known better. Gears controller. Yeah. That I probably stole from work. Um, yeah, that definitely because I, I think it disappeared. I had the red one. I've had it for like years. It was before there was a lounge, so I don't know where I got it from. I might have got it from Willow, actually. I'm not sure. Nice backtrack. That's it's good. possible. Good job. It's technically possible. But yeah, I had the Red sure. Gears controller, and I wanted to play uh, NHL with my brother, because they won't release NHL on PC since, like, what was it? Like, 96 oh, or yeah, something? something like, like, no, no, it was in the 2000s, like 2005 or 2006 or something. Oh, maybe it's 2006. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they haven't released NHL on PC in forever, so my brother and I wanted to play on Xbox. Um, and I, wasn't, I didn't really want to buy an Xbox, but I had um, plans of how we could play an NHL game on the TV. Don't worry about it. Through cloud streaming. Sure. Um, but anyways, I wanted more Xbox controllers, and I couldn't find just getting just the Gears controller. Because that's all I wanted. I didn't actually want the Xbox. So I reached out to a contact and was like, can I buy just the controller? And then they sent me the whole thing. I didn't okay. know they were going to do it. So you leveraged your, you know, contacts here. I did not meet this person through work. He knows what he did. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you so have an Xbox it's now. It's turned on once. <laughs> well, no, I've had it for like four years or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got a really great value out of that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Hey, I mean, the good news is it can never, you know, red ring of death if you never turn it on. <laughs> well, okay, because I, I, bought... I know I know that's not an issue with the series. You'll even or, remember or Xbox One S or whatever. Remember, I got that TV. Yeah. The TV was more or less also so that I could like have people over. Oh, right. And then that was like... That was a week before COVID happened. Yeah. How'd that go for you? <laughs> no, I, I'm not even the one that uses the TV anymore. <laughs> it's like exclusively my girlfriend. I don't ever use it. I think you had a. I think you had an inkling that that was going to happen at the time, though. I did. Yeah. Because you were like, yeah, I don't care about the TV, but this is the good one, right? I'm like, yeah. And you're like, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly how it happened. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I did zero research. I called Linus, like, on the way to the store and was like, tell me what to do. <laughs> hey, it's a good TV. It's great. <laughs> it was, yeah, it worked It worked quite well. You, I was, yeah. You bought it at a good time because basically... There was you, some huge sale. You've got 4K 120 hertz. You've got HDR support. You've got variable refresh rate with, like, G-Sync compatibility or whatever. Um, so you've got basically everything you need and all that's happened since then is they've gotten a little bit brighter, basically more color gamut, more brighter. They are better. The newer ones are better, but if you are using them anytime other than during the day with sunlight coming in, I, I, the newer ones are better, but man, are you ever having a lot of the experience with, I think it's what, like a C2 or something that you have C1. I don't remember. I don't remember. It's You'd nice. honestly probably remember better than oh, me. Man, it might not even be. No, it must be like a C10. Yeah. Oh, well, that sounds more. It's correct. probably a C10. Yeah. That sounds more correct. Yeah, because they, they they started over. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. So there's like there's so C8 oh. and nine and ten or whatever. I can't remember if there was a C in the. <laughs> Luke, Luke thinks Wancho is based off Wancho Bingo. <laughs> just, just, just. <laughs> Sorry. It was funny. Oh man. Okay. Anywho, uh, Dan, we don't know what to do because you don't have the cue cards up. <laughs> yeah, I lost uh, everything. Uh, I don't know what is oh, next. hey, my buttons work now. Though. I fixed the buttons. Look, it's I just, Dan. I just fixed the buttons. It's flustered, Dan. Uh, what do we do? Merge messages now? I don't, I don't know. know. This one says do merge messages. Let okay. Me put that up. <laughs> he still hasn't, hasn't managed to put it up there. See, there's he hit microphone. the microphone. There's a microphone. Why are you way? hurting our viewers? They deserve and it. yourself. I deserve it. No. Uh, no. This no. hasn't, this hasn't no. happened in so long. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I, sw I swear this never happens to me. Yes, oh, yeah. interesting. Sorry. Hold on. What? Hold on. There's there's interesting slides in this deck. Um, Cloud First Gamers is the blue. PC First Gamers is the, the light green. And Console First and Multi Device Gamers are, are the dark green. Are we that small? Well, oh, okay. I, I don't think Multi Device is... 
Yeah. Fair. That's stupid. You yeah. can't just lump multi-device in with console. Because there's plenty of PC-first gamers that are multi-device. Oh, man. Yeah, that's pretty dumb. That feels like someone on the console team trying to inflate Trying the... to juice it. Yeah. Trying to juice the numbers. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's it. Yeah, that's a strong disagree. Wow, that thing is... Brooklyn? It looks like a router. It's just like a like, circular like one of those old X? stupid uh, like D-Link had routers that looked like that, I think, back in the day. Updated technologies. Wow, this is this leak is crazy. It actually is. Holy crap. Giving our fans more to love. Like this is this is clearly presentations that real time was spent on and are very real. Wow. Die shrink for improved efficiency. Whew. Undisputed. Yeah, I think there are a fair number of people that would dispute the Series S in general and its um its positive contributions to, to console gaming. But sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's explain what merch messages are and do a couple. We don't do Twitch bits or whatever the thing on super, super chats. chats. Man, I sleep deprived. You know, there's uh, there's different kinds of sleep deprived. Sometimes I get kind of like uh, like like silly, and then other times I get you know. Today I'm just stupid. <laughs> like I, I actually I feel like I feel like this is what it must be like to not be very smart. <laughs> like I start a thought and I just. Like, I don't know how to explain this. There's, there's, you can, you can you say something. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> you can apparently make uh, rough equations, or sorry, rough comparisons between sleep deprivation and and uh, being drunk. Yeah. So yeah, being awake for at least 18 hours is the same as someone having a blood alcohol uh, content level of 0.05 percent. Being awake for 24 hours is equal to having a blood alcohol content of 0.1 percent. Sick. Uh, well, see, I'm not sleep deprived in that way. It's more cumulative. Yeah, I think uh, that's a harder one to measure, but it, I'm sure it has a similar effects. I I have I've had a really big, um, I, I've had a really big project on the go lately. We finally, finally have the One U LAN Center mm. gaming systems up. You know what? We can talk. We can talk about it a little bit later on the show. First, let's explain what a merch message is. Uh, so we don't do those normal kinds of messages to shows because we think they're kind of a bad value for the viewer. What if we don't see them? Or what if we see them and, frankly, they're not very you know, relevant and we don't respond to them? Then you basically got nothing. You got pixels on a screen, um, and and that's that's a shame. But the way that we do it, Hey, you get your pixels on the screen. Sup, Alexander G. Uh, our producer, Dan, will go through some of the merch messages and either reply to them himself, like to Alexander G., or send them to us to address later on the show. Or none of that happens, and hey, you just get your order in the mail, and you get like a sick T-shirt or a hoodie or a water bottle or a screwdriver or whatever the case may be. So you just got to go to the merch message box in the cart, and whenever we are live, fill out the merch messages field and then go ahead and place your order and it gets dumped into the queue for producer Dan. Uh, Dan, do you have a couple of uh, a couple of merch messages for us? I do, actually. First one here. Hey, LLD, given the amount of times you talk about tech-related lawsuits or legislation, have you considered adding legal experts to the team to review them so we know exactly how it's affecting us? I think for the most part, Unless you are an enormous company, you you generally seek legal advice on a consultancy basis. Yes. Yeah. Like I mean, even I'm thinking like even you know the CNNs and you know Fox Newses of the world, um, uh, they uh, okay. Hold on, hold on, just a second. They obviously have internal legal con legal counsel. Oh, but they'll also have. But they yeah. but when they're but for the content, they bring in legal contributors who my understanding is a lot of the time are not necessarily paid. They're paid in exposure on the network, is, is my understanding. And to be clear, I'm not, I'm not suggesting, this is not a call for lawyers to consult for me for free. It's just what I'm saying is that I don't, I don't necessarily know that media organizations will just have a lawyer on staff. Because the thing about law is it's not just, you don't just hire a it's lawyer quite specialized it's very specialized so if we were going to talk about you know copyright or if we were going to talk about um for example uh patent 
uh, patent law or if we were going to talk about... Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if financial if, crimes, if you know, like a CNN style legal team would almost be a legal team that, uh, like works through contractors or like, like finds the right. No. Yeah. Knows who to know mm-hmm. and who to, who to bring in for, you know, a, a, a relevant take on whatever the, the topic du jour is. Yeah. I could totally see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Vec Tavis says, I have an ex-prosecutor as my company's legal counsel. Sometimes they can pivot. I mean, that's true, but what if they what if they don't? Or what if they make a mistake? Would I be better off just, you know, bringing in someone to consult for us on, uh, you know, whenever needed? I Yeah, I, I don't know. It's not something that, it's not something that's on our radar right now. I think right now we're just really focused on making really great content. Got a lot of really exciting stuff lined up. Uh, oh man, there's something I really want to tell you guys about, but I guess I can't really do it yet. Soon, soon. I will tell you guys soon, but I'm very excited about it. All right, Dan, what else you got for us? Sure. Last one here. Dear Dan, Linus, and Luke, and Wan crew, my 22-year-old autistic brother dropped $120 on Mario Kart Tour last week. Do you have any tips on how I can help him not be susceptible to this kind of thing? Oh. <sighs> This is a tough one. Um, it's funny because this I'm having almost having like a deja vu moment because somebody asked me something recently that was like, "How do I prevent this like grown ass person?" Yeah, that's that's the problem from yeah. doing something. Yeah, and I was like, "Well, there you can't." Yeah, like from from like like legally, morally, like all of these ease. Um, they are an independent person who can who can make I think there's some I think there's some layers here their own decisions did they want to do that is this like an impulse control problem after the fact they're like oh, I wish I didn't do this that type sure. of stuff then maybe there's some opportunities to step in is it their money yeah i mean if it's not their money remove the card from the account or if it is their money um but they're going to be reliant on you now to replace that that's the things a, they would have spent that's, that's an where interesting one. that's where things can get very complicated yeah. with family obviously we don't know much about the dynamic here but like i would i would hazard a, okay can can your brother afford it is another question that i would be asking so you know if it if it is if it is his money and he can afford it then but then yeah you know i i, I don't know right because i would want to intervene so uh, in spite of everything we just said, like I would, I would want to do something if I saw if I saw one of my siblings throwing away money at at different colored pixels. Yeah, but that kind time, of money. So I, I, it's in a week. Oh yeah, no, I, I understand. And but my assumption. If, oh, go ahead. Uh, my understanding here is not anywhere near um, good enough, but. I, I I believe people on the spectrum can be very fixated on certain things. Sure. Yeah. And maybe they find an a very very high amount of enjoyment from this, and they have the money. If if the, if those if all those things line up, then whatever. It's an adult making an adult decisions. It is what it is. But like you were saying, does this now make them reliant on someone else's money? Sure. Is this not their money? Is this all these other different types of things? Um, and did they did they want that to be the reality at all? Like this might be a situation where they came to this person who sent in the merge message, and like potentially asked them for help. We don't know how regular of an occurrence this is. That too. Maybe this is something that where this is not the first time that they've spent you know a hundred plus dollars on uh you know on a on a mobile game essentially, right? Mm-hmm. <sighs> I, I mean, I I personally, um. I find that adding steps to things is like really beneficial to make you not do it. Sure. Um, like one of the one of a money spending hack that I I know a few people that have done um, is they'll they'll um, stop carrying certain cards. Yeah. And just carry cash. I took the Twitter app off my phone. Yeah. I still have Twitter. Yeah. I can you access could, it on a desktop. You could install it again. If I or really want to access it on a desktop. Yeah. If I really want to look at something, I can I can open the page in a browser. At least I could until they like. Made that more yeah, difficult. Sick. Um, but but you add these barriers. So maybe just don't let the mobile device remember your card. Or if it has to remember your card, uh, just remove the card after the transaction. 
Yeah, Nighttime Astronaut says it's predatory from the company. I'm a disability advocate and I'm neurospicy. We are targeted by ads purposefully. Yeah, that's... Um, I'm sure that's a thing. That's nasty. I'm also totally convinced that's a thing. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there, there's, totally no, believe it. there's no question in my mind that that's a thing. It's just... It doesn't change that from a legal standpoint, this is a grown adult. Yes. And you can't... You, you can't tie someone down and go, like, no no more Mario Kart tour. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, other other than just... other than just, Here's a... Yeah. Here's a weird potential idea. Sure. Try to get them hooked on an, a, a different Mario Kart that doesn't have microtransactions. But that's the problem is it's not as hooking. The, 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 the gacha mechanisms are not built into those games. Yeah, but they're... They're still fun. I know, but it's Give it to Mario Kart Eight. It's a great game. It's different. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, it's it's different. It's not the same thing. Show some enjoyment. Play it. Play it with them. Have fun. I don't know. Yeah, there is. There, uh, that's a good a, point. There isn't a substitute for spending time together. Yeah. So, like, maybe, maybe I don't know. This is this is possibly not fair, and I'm volunteering this person's time. But um, that's probably the approach that I would try to. If I if I saw that someone that I knew and cared about was having a toxic relationship with something, I would try to help them go in a different direction, but not make them, but just make it voluntary. Like, hey, you clearly really like Mario Kart. You're playing this version of it that has gotcha microtransactions. That sucks. I'm down to play Mario Kart 8 with you. Do you want to go play that? Let's get all the unlocks in the game because you can unlock all these different kite things and wheels and all this kind of stuff let's focus on doing that let's do it together and then you go play that together and then they get hooked on that game and it's um potentially a little bit better i don't know just an idea it's unfortunate but yeah i don't know i i, I don't i don't have a way to solve this i mean i see people kind of talking through different possibilities in the chat and you know you've got the uh, you know government regulation is going to be one that's always going to be a, a controversial a controversial topic in these things right because you've got advocates on the one side saying we need regulation we need regulation because these companies are just going to exploit vulnerable people and then you've got people on the other side going look we can't regulate ourselves into a nanny state if if a grown adult wants to buy a product or service why shouldn't they be allowed to buy a product or service and i think there's compelling arguments both ways i don't think this is a simple black and white issue um and i <laughs> I'm reminded of the uh, the news. I think this was also this week. It was either this week or last week that Neuralink is looking for human volunteers <laughs> yeah. for early yeah. implants. Yeah. And I'm kind of sitting here going, you know, these obviously these are going to be grown adults, hopefully, you know, of sound mind and body who are making the decision to be to 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 be guinea pigs for for their experimentation. Uh, should this even be legal? And it's like, I guess. I mean, it's your body, but I mean, in, in some parts of the world, isn't suicide technically illegal? Hmm. I don't. Th I don't think there's How, a. What does that? What does that mean? Well, I don't think there's a punishment for it to the person who is dead, obviously, but it can affect things like, for example, um, your insurance. I know that. I, I don't know that it's the illegality that would affect that, but you know, if you kill yourself, you don't get the insurance payout. Um, oh. Yeah, uh, Noodles, it says in the chat, in the U.S., suicide is illegal. Huh. It's like, okay. It was, <laughs> it will put you in jail. <laughs> yeah, it's illegal in the U.K. too, says Night Pause. What does it mean? So is it just an insurance thing? Because that, yeah. Apparently it's illegal so the police can get involved without a warrant. That's interesting. Uh hmm. I, Ian, Ian Xmas says gambling needs to be monitored and controlled. I mean... Sure, but where's the line, right? Like, look how. And was it gambling? Look how long it took to regulate, like, smoking. What's the name for of this example. game again? Mario Kart what? Mario Kart Tour. Tour, mobile game. Super, got it. Oh, people are saying it's illegal so that trying, so attempting it can be punished. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, what are you going to accomplish with that? I don't, seems stupid. I, I don't know, man. 
So you can be forced to get help. Um, that you know, that's oh, okay. That's that's something. Yeah, so what, are you going to throw them in jail for it? Like, what do you think that's going to? Yeah. Do? Uh, also, if someone helps you, they can be charged with aiding and abetting. Okay, so I think I'm cool with that. Turns out there are some good reasons. I'm sure there's. I don't know. I, that's a very nuanced topic. Term. Hundred percent. Microtransactions remain the game. Yeah, I'm not certain if the Mario Kart Tour, if the microtransactions are just like buying a thing or buying a, a dice roll. Got I it. I don't. I don't know what they are. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right, do you want to give us one more merch message, Dan? Um, yeah, sure. Um, let's see what I've got here. Hey, LLD, what kind of actions would you have to take of any if a Mr. Beast-sized creator wanted to join Floatplane? Uh, I think if a Mr. Beast-sized creator wanted to join, we'd probably have to beef up the infra just a little bit. I would imagine they'd have some special requests in terms of tools they would want built for engagement with their audience. That's pretty common. Yeah, as long as they're not too onerous, like as long as there's something that we could sort of try to fast track or get on a roadmap or they're willing to be a little bit patient. Um, I, I would think at this point, not too much. You know, don't don't quote me on that, right? There's, like there's stuff that we would need to do, but there's solutions that we can implement that could solve it. Like we'd be fine. All right, why don't we jump into our next topic? Luke, you want to pick one? Sure. Give me a sec. I was looking at the Mario Kart Tour stuff. Um, do we have the co-pilot thing? Yes. It's oh, working? sick. We have it? I just did it? Oh, nice. Okay. Well, should we do that? Should we use it? I'm just trying to get it to the Okay. So you're still doing stuff. Okay. Yeah, well, let's let's maybe do that later. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, cool. No, no, 1080 is fine. No, you, oh. you keep poking with that, I'll talk through the topic. Uh, on Thursday, Microsoft announced Microsoft Copilot in Windows, which you may have thought they already announced, but you may be thinking about GitHub Copilot, which was announced in 2021, Microsoft 365 Copilot, which was announced in March 2023, or Windows Copilot, ever more different than, you know, anyways, that was announced in May 2023. Microsoft Copilot in Windows rather, is a unification of the company's disparate chatbot-like services, rebranded with a new colorful logo and an actual release date. This Tuesday, September 26, finally, a release date on any AI product is fantastic. Um, the feature will roll out in Windows 11 in its early form, accessible through the Windows plus C key keyboard shortcut okay i'm not gonna lie i'm actually like <laughs> very excited to try this right now no this is this is interesting dan has a laptop for us because we've had we've yeah, had a he's lot putting it of... on the floor why is he putting it on the floor i don't want floor laptop it's not i don't like based floor on a movie dan yeah yeah floor laptop laptops are not based on movies the movie Come um on. the movie the game <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as Microsoft revealed when announcing Windows Copilot, Copilot can pull data from a user's calendar, email, documents, um, so nothing from anyone who's using Google for all of those things, I guess, um, anything Microsoft app related to help you answer questions and perform tasks. It can also help you control your desktop itself. You can tell it to arrange windows, change system settings, launch specific Spotify playlists, no way. and much more. Okay, well, let's do stuff. Yeah, try to arrange some windows. Pull okay. open some stuff. Uh, I mean, there's no apps on here. But the back of that laptop is very distracting. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, I don't know how to turn that off. Imagine having that in a class. I mean, I think that's sort of the point. You just piss off the teacher? Just peacock super hard. Yeah. Just tape over it. Wow. Um, I put a new button on your deck there when you want to switch into the uh, the laptop. Oh, sick. Okay. Where is it? Oh, on his. Yeah. Got it. Oh, do you want one? No, no, it's fine. Everybody can have a button. They're free. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. Here's two. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh! There you go. You're special. Yeah, they're like ducks at the park. Yeah. They're free. You can just take them home. <laughs> <laughs> like domain names. Despite the unification, Microsoft's branding is still all over the place concerning commercial customers who can also consider using Bing Chat enterprise and microsoft 365 copilot the latter of which will be available for enterprise customers november 1st i didn't know that enterprise microsoft 365 copilot is gonna be very interesting 
Hopefully it's not trash. We'll see. OpenAI also announced Dolly 3, which the company says does a lot better than other modern text to image systems at not ignoring words in prompts. Uh, it can also actually generate text in an image properly as seen here. And then there's a little example that I'm going to jump to. <laughs> I just feel so empty inside, which is amazing for people who have messed with these things in the past because the text was always just like garbly gook, no real letters, just kind of some weird uh, shape patterns where the text is supposed to be. So having actual text is very, that's a, that's a pretty big step to be completely honest. Um, that's pretty cool. Data economy fed uh, OpenAI's demo prompts into mid-journey and compared the outputs and it's pretty close apparently. We're gonna check that out as well. Uh, like this. Let's go to the beach and find the right hermit. Close-up photograph of a hermit crab nestled in wet sand with sea foam nearby and the details of its shell and texture of the sand accentuated. Yeah. I don't know if this is a hermit crab. I don't know what a hermit crab looks like, to be honest with you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and that's from Dolly. And Mid Journey's on the right. Huh. Okay. I don't know how many examples there are. Here we go. Dancer's Desire. That's a really long prompt, but they actually do look pretty similar. One is just like facing us and the other one's facing away. Sheesh. Photo of a lychee inspired, I think that's how you say that. I don't know. Inspired spherical chair with a bumpy white exterior and plush interior set against a tropical wallpaper. Huh. Quite similar. Man, I, I'm, every time I play around with this stuff wow. or look at it, I'm just kind of blown away. Ha <laughs> ha, potatoes. <laughs> We know a thing or two about generating potato images on Dolly. We do. Um, anyways, speaking of uh, speaking of potato, uh, no, never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tease that. Oh wow! Okay. Something potato oh, related. That's all I can say. The Dolly three, uh, is, or sorry, Dolly three is in research preview now and will be available to ChatGPT Plus and enterprise customers in October, and will of course be integrated into Bing and various Microsoft apps and services as well. Lastly, there were new Surface Surface devices announced, all with very iterative upgrades. Business Insider and Windows Central say that this is part of the reason for formal Surface chief Panos Panay's sudden departure this week after twenty. years years at the company. Surface Laptop Studio 2 um, with an Intel 13th Gen Core i7 H-Class chip, uh, various ones I suspect at different price points, an RTX uh, 4050 or 4060, Intel Neural Processing Unit, and up to two terabytes of uh, like dedicated storage and 64 gigs of RAM starts at around 1999. I say around because they don't specify what chip it is and there's two different GPU models, so I don't know. Um, Surface Laptop Go 3, pretty much just internal upgrades, same 12.4 inch screen, now has Intel 12th gen, in, not 13th I guess, instead of 11th and starts at 799. Surface Go 4 for business, same chassis as Go 3, Intel Core, Intel Door, blah, blah, Intel Dual Core Pentium. I got there. In Go 3, replaced with quad core Intel N200, marked for business. Do not have fun with it. <laughs> it's illegal. That's right. Riley wrote that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I assumed. I don't even have the doc <laughs> open right now, but I, I, I know. I don't. I don't technically know that. I, I just, I didn't put it in there. Oh, so okay. It, yeah, it's yeah. That's one of them. Almost certainly Riley. Um, and then last, but. Not least, potentially least, who knows? Uh, Surface Hub 3, some minor upgrades over the Hub 2S announced in March. Hub 3 mod, uh, module can be purchased and installed in existing Hub 2S devices. Okay, should we just start doing Copilot? Does yeah, care about I've that? been waiting for you to do this this oh, whole time. Oh my goodness, no, I'm ready. Okay, tell me what to have it do. Do the Windows organizing. I, th th this is the last conversation we had. Well, no, but I want to do, do interesting stuff. Okay. I think Windows organizing. Open a browser for me. very interesting. Uh, no thanks. Can you open a good browser? Oh! <laughs> Let's see. 
Let's see. If it if it doesn't off of this, which please confirm the action in the dialog box that has appeared. Oh, why do I have to click it? it? Why would I have to click it? That's weird. Sure, you can confirm. What? Say say uh, open Google Chrome. I don't know why you would ever want to do this instead of just typing in the start menu. Well, because eventually you would want to interact with your voice, not the keyboard. Yeah. Like I don't see I don't see a a voice input right now. Yeah, you can do your own, but yeah. Please confirm the action in the dialog box that has appeared. What are you talking well, about? Well, it's already. F- he clicked it though. He said no thanks, and it like grayed out. Hello, buddy. Uh, okay. Um, open file explorer. And Chrome is not a good browser. Yeah, I just I the only one I see on there is Edge and Chrome. Yeah, open file explorer and show me where my uh program files are. Is this gonna do anything? I mean, yes, yes, obviously. Click it. Oh, it graded out. Yeah, it graded out. It it looks like it's duplicating. Did you click it? I try. Well, it's grayed out. It wasn't grayed out originally. All it right, the out. file explorer is now open. You can navigate to the program <laughs> files. It's hallucinating already. <laughs> I don't want to navigate to that folder. <laughs> okay, well, I it, asked you to do it. In its defense, you're using it in the way that it's not. It it should work the way that you're doing it, but it's it's clearly not intended to be used that way. I think you should start a new chat, let it dump, so open that it's not going to hallucinate. Open file and as click much. the button properly. No, don't open. No, no don't, no, don't, don't, no, no, make no, it no, do no, it. no, 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 don't close that. Fine. You're a, you're a bad pilot. Fine. It's open, just trying to co-pilot, but you're not, you're not being a good pilot. Open file explorer. Okay, so maybe I just need to, maybe I just need to click it way faster. Well, no, you, you're there. just typing yes. something new before you click it. Yeah, it's okay. working. Well, why does it, why does that second dial? Sure, you can confirm the action in the dialog box that has appeared. And you've already done it. Yeah, I've it's already weird. done it. What are you talking it about? It has problems for sure. Okay, um, show me where my music is. Oh, I mean theoretically, if I have a folder called music, then it should. I mean, sure, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hmm. No. Um, where is my music in File Explorer? Wow, this is pretty rudimentary, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think you need to start a whole new thread though, because you're you're already hallucinating. Uh, no, I don't. Okay, fine. How do I how do I new thread? I don't even see I the here. Maybe up here. Talk, okay, so refresh. This... All right. Okay, fine. Let's... Also, I will I will say here that this is not the release version. We don't well we don't know that this is a release version or not. Are you talking to the stream right now, Dan? Oh, yeah. Dan, you might as well just talk to the stream yeah, you if should you're going to say that, that stuff. Because we're just going to sit here in silence while you talk to us anyway. Yeah. Hey, that's nice. Okay, Tomb Raider is both a movie <laughs> and a game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, but that's just normal co-pilot stuff. It's more of a come on. Try to try to get it to do cool things. Open some windows. Get it to organize it. Come on. I'd rather bother you. Oh my goodness. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's not more of one than the other. I'm just gonna install started as a video game series in 1996. Mmm, iconic protagonist Lara Croft. Again, when I was five. Do you think that's an excuse, Luke? <sighs> Is this enterprise, if you only get four prompts on free, like Bing, this would be useless? Well, I mean, I, he's I, also just like not 30. using it properly. <laughs> so, like, who knows if it's useless or not? He's, like, being antagonistic to the to the poor little... 
I'm not being antagonistic. Act. Yes, you are. It's it's presenting an option, yes or no. Click these buttons, and then you're not clicking it. Okay, fine. Well, they took they they went away. They got grayed out. I because you typed something more. I shouldn't have to interact with my mouse for this. I agree, but clearly it's designed that All way. All right, fine. So I'll use just, it properly. Then I'll just type in what you, you can, want. You can criticize that it's it shouldn't work that way. You can criticize that it should res it should work off of your texted response. But you can also use it properly at the same time. Come on, Mr. Reviewer Man. T t tell me, tell me what you want me to have it do. I've wanted you to have it organize Windows literally this whole time. Okay, fine. Open Steam, and open Chrome, and why would I want it to do that and organize <laughs> their Windows? I mean, what what am I even? <laughs> how could it possibly hope to do this for me? I don't know. Whoa! Yeah, yes. Oh, whoa. Yes. Oh, wow, this is... Yes. Oh, why would I need three prompts for this? I snapped a window for you. You didn't! So it did the it did it all at the same time? So the apps weren't actually open yet? Yeah, I'm the one making this bad, Luke. Thank you. That's very helpful. Well, no, I, at least we've learned something now. What did we learn? That it sucks? We already learned that. Well, we learned that when you click things, it actually does stuff, so that's pretty cool. You didn't organize the windows. Oh, this is not how you interact with these things. Why not? Because it's just needlessly antagonistic. Oh, well, wow. it worked, smart guy. I'm sorry for the confusion. I can't physically organize the windows. It tells you how to do windows. it! It also says it did it for you, and then I click yes, and it doesn't do it. I snapped a window for you. You can snap others beside it. Oh, Steam's open um, now. Okay. Uh... Can I close can I can I close Steam without it appearing in my taskbar? Oh. I don't I don't know. Get, oh. Can it do that for me? Can it close it, it to the system stats. tray? It, I don't know if I'm not signed in, so I don't know if it'll behave a little bit differently here. How to close Steam without it? Okay, so it just searches for it. Okay, what are fundamental Windows things that it could do? It Okay, so let's jump up to what it talks about. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. It can help you control your desktop itself. You can tell it to arrange windows, change system settings, and launch specific Spotify playlists, and much more. Can I find the original thing where it lists these features? And maybe I can find them more. Mm. With over 150 new features. I could see this being super, super... Uh, okay, here we go. This is what I've been trying to get to. I'm sorry for the misunderstanding, but as an AI, I don't have the ability to directly interf interact with your computer's interface. I can provide instructions and guidance, but I can't perform actions on your computer. How did Steam just log That's in? That's not true, though, because it did perform actions on your computer. Okay. How did Steam just log in? Uh, what just happened? Huh. All I had was a login screen. Someone oh, scanned the QR someone code. Someone scanned Somebody the QR logged code. in. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> um, you need to make sure you fully close Steam because they could remote in. Right. Okay. That's I'll, pretty funny though. Close Steam. That is, <laughs> that is excellent. Don't ever do that again, but that's hilarious. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Shouldn't laugh at that. Uh, bad. Th no. Uh, um, something. I have new things to write down that we need to protect against. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't perform, I can't perform actions on your computer. You'll need to follow the steps I provided to remove the chat icon from your taskbar. Let me know if you need further assistance. So, I could see this being super, super useful for people who don't want to dig mm -hmm. into the three different control panels that Windows has now to figure out how to, you know, change your audio device try from to, one to the other. Try but to this get is it to just, change. This is just clippy. Try to get it to change like power modes. Sure. Um or or like sleep settings oops. or uh what happens when you close the lid. Okay, can you uh set my computer to sleep after 5 minutes? Yeah, I think that's basically just going to be 
Clippy with ChatGPT. Oh, it had to search for that. Yeah, like why do you have to search for that? Sorry, I can't do this. Can you okay, can you here, start a new this. chat? Can you clear this chat and then try that again? I can. I, I don't think it's going to make a difference, though, Luke. I don't think it can actually interact with the system basically at all. But it, like it, that's why it needs that manual prompt every time it allegedly does something for you, so like the, open a window. The notes in our doc. I'm trying to find this in the official thing, but the notes in our doc say um, it can pull data from a user's calendar, email, documents, anything Microsoft app related to help you answer, perform tasks. It says it can help arrange windows, change system settings, and launch specific playlists. Did it just do this? This okay, so it, it opened it for you, but you have to be the one that flips the switch? Yeah, but it didn't open the right thing. Look at this. Please disable Wi-Fi. Sure. Would you like me to turn off Bluetooth for you? Okay. Then it goes, I open the devices page in settings. Well, which one is it? Are you supposed to do it for me? Or are you supposed to open this window? Also, I don't have the capability to disable Wi-Fi. You can do this by going to the network settings on your device. Where? Suppose I'm a novice user. I don't know where this is. Why did you give me three different answers? Want me to do it for you? Here, do it yourself. I can't do that. I don't know, man. I um. That seems pretty bad. This seems that seems pretty basic. Yeah. I want to turn off my Wi-Fi. Do we have anything? Um... Here, does this thing have like McAfee on it or something? Like, is this preloaded with any like junkware? Oh, you know what? I bet it has like Candy Crush or whatever on it. Uh, what's what's the junkware that comes on um, on uh, Windows devices? Didn't it used to come with Candy Crush? Uh, check out Paint. Paint. Yeah, open Paint. I mean, isn't there a new Paint that has transparency now? That's kind of big news. Why are we not talking about that on my show? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I forgot about it. There's a lot of cool things in new Paint. Is this new Paint? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, this, so I had I had some concerns about us. <laughs> trying this ahead of time why um, this is fun i'm having a good time yeah okay i drew um it looks a map it looks great you start here now you gotta now you gotta do the use the fill tool to fill in some of those things and then it becomes modern art okay and then you end up oh, here you go so you start at the house and then you end at work <laughs> um Wait, what is this? Got him. It's a truck. Oh. Hey. Heck yeah. It has a little, like, That's little cloud truck. coming out the back and everything. And here's... Oh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, fine details. Fine details. Here's you. Oh. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho. Sick. Um, uh, how did you get... If the truck is your method of transportation, though, how did you get to it? Oh. I don't know. What if that just shows the path that you've taken so far? Can you save the drawing I made in MS Paint? Can you do basically anything? So here's here's my problem. Yeah with this is this is supposed to be a windows update sure. um whoops and like i'm going to jump onto my screen really quick okay uh new windows 11 update delivers over 150 new features including bringing the power of copilot to the pc copilot in windows in preview paint photos snipping tool clip champ notepad uh new outlook for windows modernized file explorer all this other type of stuff we clearly don't have all these things what did we install? Just the Copilot preview? Is that right, Dan? Uh, pretty sure. This is like the most bleeding edge version of Windows on the planet right now. Um, so this has the right, weird but it doesn't Copilot. have all these other things. So we, we don't know how old this version of Copilot is. We don't know if this is the version of Copilot that they're actually going to be launching. And when they do launch it, it's going to be a preview version. Now, I will say, given its performance right there, I'm not the most confident in it. Um. Hmm. I, I just... Um, Would you want it to be able to do actions without user input? Well, it's not without user input. I am inputting. 
I mean, okay, this is something. Yeah, but what if I wrote a script to pretend like this is my? Yeah. This is why it doesn't do things on your computer, because then it's dangerous, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be dangerous uh, regardless. But you could already script those things to happen. Yeah, okay. But I guess it's pointless the... then. Yeah, it's not like you can do anything in here that you couldn't do in a PowerShell, yeah. which can run in the background anyway. Yeah. So yeah. like what, what what are we what are we protecting from here exactly? Lawsuits. Well, yeah, but, but if they were going to sue over this, they could sue over PowerShell. You know what I mean? Like I just I don't really I I do wonder if this is just mm. a, you know, the starting point where it's basically chat GPT, but you don't have to go to bing.com, which is a benefit. I mean, that's something. I don't want to go to bing.com. I just don't think we should say almost anything because we don't know if this is the right version. Well, what well, we know is that is this version? is a version that is in well, development. Yeah, sure. But yeah. like, that's not the necessarily... We're, we're talking about this as if it's the one that people are going to get. Well, no, like we have I'm, no idea if that's true. I'm talking about this in the terms of how it describes itself, right? It describes itself as not being capable of interacting with your computer, which was no, exactly what I wanted to this know. this version of it describes it that way. I think that that is a significant design decision. That's not a technical thing. That's a design decision. So, no, I don't think it's likely that that's going to change in the, what is it, like four days before this is more broadly available. Okay, but here's the thing. The one that they're showing off in the video yeah. has a mic. This one doesn't. Sure. This is not the right version. Sure, but, I, I mean, again, that doesn't address what I said. Where something to help me focus, and it automatically opens Spotify. Oh, no, no you have to it click doesn't. it. So, it, so you Organize have to do... Windows everything it just no it just did it look well here hold wait, on hold on because we Organize haven't actually windows. hold on we haven't actually tried that yet i thought we did no 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 i was just bothering you we never actually tried it because i asked it to open stuff then organize it mm. and what it did was it tried to use um aerosnap or whatever it's called now and then it ultimately it, it, there's there's more stuff in here that it's doing without user input hold on hold on hold on let's try it let's try it organize my windows here we go Uh, yeah, I would, sure. So yeah, yeah, this is not how it works in their video. Isn't it a marketing video? Yeah, but like it's... I, I don't... We're using a version that is not the one that is going to be released. Do you think it's there really going to significantly change There are change clear in differences four days. between the two apps. We cannot say this is legit. We will get destroyed for this. This is... BS. This version came out today. It doesn't matter. Nobody said it's legit, Luke. We said this is what Microsoft oh. has made available right now. This is an extreme preview build. Yeah. There's like four layers of extreme it's previews. it's completely irrelevant because one that is clearly not this version because it has functionality that we can see, like the mic button, is being released in a couple days. And we're talking about one that is now already clearly old. Are you, you mad? You guys, you guys, I am mad. You guys don't see the problem with this? No, not at all. Oh my god. Not even a little bit. Goofballs. But the, this Goofballs. is... Goofballs. They released this today. So what? So why would we not talk about it? When, would, when would we is, talk about it? This is not the news article that we're addressing. So? But this is what's so here. We, so we read out a news article with talking points and then talk about something completely different. I mean, okay, can I draw, can I make an it's analogy? It's like secret, uh, no, I won't name a certain brand. Uh, LTT Store releases a new shirt. Well, they used American Apparel shirts like seven years ago, so let's review an American Apparel shirt. But that's not comparable at all. It's like if, it's like if a game developer announced an upcoming game and announced a release date for it and showed a, showed a trailer for it, and then, like, you know, two days later or whatever, put up a preview build of it and people played the preview build and talked about it. That's what this is. There is nothing wrong with that. They didn't have to make this preview build available. This is not pirated. This isn't a leak. This is something Microsoft made available. I, I don't think it is proper form to read a news article about something and then open up something that is clearly not that thing. Chat GPT4 in chat says Linus knows he's wrong. He's just messing with Luke. No, I, I, I legitimately don't. I think it's completely valid if a company releases a preview to use it and talk about it. 100%. They don't have to do that. In, in my opinion, this is a, a preview build of what is going to be released on Tuesday. 
and they exist in the preview builds for you know stability testing for the wider Windows, you know. Luke is world. right. Luke is right that we don't know that. Yeah. But there are certain things that we can uh, that we can anticipate based on what we're looking at right now, and they might they might turn out to be different. And I would I would love for this to be very different, but it's clear to me right now from a from a design standpoint that this is meant to be more of a um but i think i think it's the wording because we're saying things like it cannot do this thing yeah right now it can't right but it they are currently showing in their stuff that it can so we need to be clear when saying that i don't know that might be that fmv this, it could be so we need to be clear when saying that that this preview view build can't do this yet sure so but we I can't test this thing and maybe we'll know when it releases on Tuesday or whenever it's releasing. Because, like, look at look at this. Turn on dark mode. Searching for the right action. Generating answers. Dark mode turned on. So, like, can it actually do that? I don't know. From our testing, can we tell that it can't do that? No. Because this maybe. is not the same version. But this is what they released today. It's just so irrelevant. Yeah, so look, it can turn on dark mode. Did it maybe. actually do it? I don't think it did. If you click yes. Let's see. Right, but you didn't have to click yes on their thing. There you go. There's your dark mode. So it can change settings. But the dark mode on their thing doesn't like explode over the screen all beautiful like in the marketing uh, I video. I mean, there's no way that yeah, that is going to be a feature of like the f definitely anything. Not a thing. That's yeah. definitely not a thing. It so looks it's cool though. It's clear that it's been zhuzhed up a little bit. Yes. And what will land in however many days until it comes is probably somewhere in between that and this. Yeah. And I would say, I would anticipate it will be closer to this. As and that, and that is, in my opinion, totally fair to say. Sure. We just have to make it very clear, very clear, that sure. we are not talking about the thing that's in the news article that we're addressing, the thing that's releasing around the corner, we're talking about this preview build that we have that is clearly not the same one because there's no mic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If they release it on Tuesday and there's no mic, that would be hilarious. Sure. But we can't actually say that that's like going to be a thing or not. Look, the only thing that I'm taking away from this is that it's pretty clear that the usefulness will be fairly limited. Oh, yeah, probably. It's, it, it's very clear that if this is anywhere near where they were at any point in time that was not a year ago that this is it's going to be quite limited yeah so that's that's my only point i think that's a pretty i think that's a pretty realistic assessment you could be I, i'm not even saying you could you could be right because all you're saying is that we don't know for sure and that's yeah. fair enough but it could be entirely different it could also be literally exactly the preview build that we just tried. It could with also no be mic, with no just change. This. Yeah, absolutely. We I, just don't know. I'd be surprised if it doesn't have a mic because to me, what I'm seeing right now is this is this is Clippy that I can interact with with my voice, and it will be some combination of Chat GPT and maybe being able to do some stuff for me. But its utility is going to be really limited. Like I can already tell from that organize my Windows thing. That that's not going to be how that works. How on earth would it know which window which I want to make big in the top left quadrant? Or yeah, I mean that's the other thing too. Is like AeroSnap. I, I, I really can't remember the new branding for it, so I'm just going to call it AeroSnap <laughs> forever. That's my commitment. How could it possibly know if I want one thing to take up the entire half of the screen and then I want the other two in quadrants? It wouldn't. It would need user interaction for that. So the version that we see here honestly looks a lot more realistic where it takes one of my windows, snaps it to the side, and kind of asks me to ask me to select another one. And actually kind of useful for people that aren't used to windows snapping because it can get a little weird. A big issue I have with this, though, is the number of different ways that I'm expected to interact with this computer. It's slow. I either need to use my voice, which... I think you're going to have to click the mic to reprompt the voice every time, I think. Unless, I, well, I know that Windows has had voice prompt support in the past, although when they killed Cortana, I don't know if that died. Like, can you can you say, hey, Bing, and have your mic wake up on your computer? I don't even know. I've, I've never had a reason to bother setting that up if it even exists. Me neither. So I, I have to activate a voice prompt 
somehow, which means I either have to touch my keyboard to hit a hotkey, or I have to interact with my trackpad or my mouse and click on something. I then need to say something out loud. I then need to wait around for a data center somewhere to receive that, that audio file, because they're probably not doing the processing locally. I then need to wait for it to searching, searching, figure out if it can do something, and I then need it to apply it. Um, it feels... Oh, right. And then in order to apply it, in many cases, I'm either going to have to basically do it myself, or I'm going to have to click on something, or otherwise con confirm. Needing or... to click on the yes is like... Ugh. Anytime you're... I, I Okay. I've I've had I've had a lot of people point out to me that I don't use uh, Control Shift Escape to open Task Manager, and my response to that is my hand's already on the mouse, my hand wasn't on my keyboard. The fastest tool is the one that's already in your hand in a lot of cases, and if my hands are already on the keyboard, you know by all means con Control Shift Escape, let's go right. But both um, your hands are on the keyboard because of typing what you just typed. So it's po yeah the oh see I really hope that the build that we get has an easier way for me to just press enter yeah, like enter to confirm enter to confirm or or maybe yeah maybe a, uh, i don't know if escape for no is good or not but maybe enter for confirm and backspace for no ah uh, i don't know because in a text box those both already kind of have meanings no i know yeah it would have to only work if you haven't typed anything yet and then the second you type anything both those controls go away here, it's the only way I've thought of it working. Here's the last thing I want to know about this preview build. Okay. Okay, all right. What was I looking for the other day? Oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, this isn't going to be any better. Oh, no. Really? This, it, Sleep Country Canada falls under best match and change... When the PC sleeps when plugged in is number three. Yikes. Are you f***ing kidding me, you web, guys? Web results really shouldn't show up in there. I hate it so much. Or they, fine, fine, maybe they do. But if I search for just sleep, what are the freaking odds? What are the odds, Microsoft, that I am looking for Sleep Country Canada instead of power sleep and battery settings? Also, can I... Can I try some? Oh no, sorry, not that one. Can I try something really quick here? Can I can I open these in a new tab? I want to know what the difference is between all these different things. <laughs> what are these? Okay, so we've got change when the PC sleeps when plugged in. Okay, so that's power and battery. Hold on, sleep. Okay, we've got. Holy oh, crap! Oh, they're different. They're different. Genius. That's okay, not we've fun. got choosing energy efficient sleep settings. Okay, so it's just all the different things and it just highlights it. Okay. What, where'd one of the other ones go? Oh, power sleep and battery settings. Okay, so that's just this. That's just two names for the same things. Same thing. <laughs> sure. Okay, fine. Good enough. Why buy a mattress anywhere else? Oh no, everyone's just talking about sleep country now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the second you said that, that jingle immediately dropped <laughs> in my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> da, 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 yeah. Ding. Um, <laughs> I'll say this there's a lot of good reasons to buy a mattress somewhere else, and we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, talk about One U Land Center? Uh, yeah, sure. I. I, I have had an extremely challenging week, um, but also an extremely exciting week. Did you realize that the first video about the land center at the at the at the new house? Can I even call it a new house anymore? It's, it's been three years. It's got some scuffs on it. Like it's <laughs> it's not new new. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's still it's still great, and I still love it. And I'm you know I'm really excited about all the things that we've done with it. And actually, there's still still lots of plans. But I, I don't know if it's new anymore. So whatever, my house. Um, the first video that we did unveiling the One U gaming systems that we were going to put in the rack to have like super <laughs> super high gaming density in the rack. That was almost a year ago Ooh. since then 
I have had laptops that I borrowed from work <laughs> set up at all those stations. <laughs> yeah, 11 months ago. This is my new gaming PC, one new PCs for my new house, part one. <laughs> that design? Completely thrown away. Gone. <laughs> Completely gone. Then it gets even better. Uh, we then did a follow-up video a couple months ago, I think it was, where we unveiled the all-new design. <laughs> we ran into some problems. It was validated quite well by the team. Super proud of the team. You know, great job. Um, but they didn't try a fiber optic display port cable. So what happened was the layout of that system had the GPU on the inside, which is totally a thing, especially for compute oriented um, yeah. rack mount machines where they'll just, yeah, they'll just like have a bunch of GPUs lined up in there. They don't have display out anyway. So who cares? These do have display out, but they had a solution to that. We were going to have uh, just little pass through cables yep. that and just have a... Um, uh, like a, a female jack at the back of the case to a male going into Even the GPU. Even fancier than you would have needed to do, really. Yeah, so pr pretty sick. Oh, yeah, or just, well, uh, just a pass-through, just a grommet it's going not into... good. That's rough because all of a sudden... What you're doing is way better. I'm just saying, like, this is not an, an impossible to overcome problem. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Okay, there's a couple of reasons that it was. Um, the way the internal layout was, there was no... There was no space with like the power supply we needed and the GPU and the cable coming out of it. Like it actually didn't fit in the width. Uh, and then number two was that if you ran something through a grommet in a rack mount, you'd have no way to pull it out without, unless you had a bunch of slack at the back and you had it like perfectly. You have to have one of those things where you have like the coiled cable on like a. Yeah. It yeah. On like a track. It's a bad solution. Like, yeah. So anyway. Um. So that design had to be substantially changed because all of a sudden we couldn't have the GPU inside the case. So uh, this was a really good idea. I can't remember if this was Jake or Antoine, but uh, someone came up with the idea of, okay, well, hold on a second. Why don't we just borrow an idea from some other GPU servers and put the GPUs at the front? Have front IO. Because, I mean, it's rack mount, right? You can have... Yep, that's St totally Stuff in the back, stuff in the front. I mean, honestly, if I'd thought of it, I would have put the networking in the front too. Why on earth? Why on earth do the vast majority of rack mount network switches have all their ports at the front, and the vast majority of rack mount systems have all the ports at the? I actually don't understand this. <laughs> To be clear, some do. Some do have ports at the front. Yeah, they definitely don't all. They yeah. definitely don't all, and yeah. the the vast majority of networking is in the front of the rack. That's a pretty good question. And I'm sure there's reasons for it, because, you know, just having everything water falling down the rack to the systems at the front, is it's not necessarily better than running everything around to the back anyway. But I, I get it, I get it, I get it. But um, the point is that we, we borrowed that idea, and... We went to roll everything out, and there were some big challenges. It turns out that having um, five different people build all five of the systems results in five different sort of types of mistakes that can get made. So I ended up spending somewhere in the neighborhood of between like 15 and 18 hours over the span of the Friday night, the weekend, and then a couple of nights this week putting all of the finishing touches on these systems. Uh, there were some extra standoffs in one of them. That was really awkward because I had to reposition the reset switch and the system was on and I was just plugging in a header, which doesn't matter. And the board flexed more than I expected because there wasn't a standoff in a spot where there should be one. And it shorted out on a standoff that wasn't supposed to be there. So that was a really scary moment. Fortunately, it survived. Um, but I also, man, I finally, I did the works. Okay. I finally did it. I custom terminated cables for every system in my rack. They are exactly, and exactly. Oh my god! The right length. Um, wow. The water cooling to the pool is in. Oh wait, yeah. for all the one use too? Oh yeah. Oh. There are six systems running off oh. it now. My personal machine, all five of the one use. Right now. Right this very moment now, all those systems wow, that's actually pretty cool. are cooled by the pool. <laughs> um, all the cable management at the back is such that I can have, if I need to perform maintenance on a system, I can have it unplugged out of the rack in about 30 to 40 seconds. 
And I've temporarily, because this is something hopefully I won't be doing a lot of, but I've got a radiator pump res combo and um, tubing whips with quick connects sitting on a bench. I can have it on that bench and plugged into those in about another 30 seconds. And I can have it, I can have it booted in well under two minutes to do any kind of diagnostic anything. Because I ran into some weird issues. Out of the five systems, two of them wouldn't update the BIOS. Just... I had one that was just resetting every time I tried to do it when it was in the rack and running over display. I mean, you never know. Theoretically, optical display port is totally transparent to the system, yeah. but you know, I, I don't know that. But the display would just turn off sometimes when I took it out and I, I put it on the bench. It just immediately worked, and the and the screen never flickered or went away. So you you you, you just you want to eliminate variables. You know, when in doubt, when something's going wrong, you just take out any potentially unusual circumstances around the system you put it on a bench you plug in just a keyboard just a monitor and power and that's it nothing fancy i actually want the most whenever i'm troubleshooting i don't want anything good i want the most basic old thing that just works yeah that's There's a it. long time there give where me dvi all the techies would go around with uh, uh ps2 keyboards because there's like a huge chance that your USB keyboard wasn't going to work in BIOS or whatever. 100%. It's kind of funny. Um, man, there's going to be, there's definitely going to be multiple videos coming. So we've got the one where we finally show the actual final build of these machines. Uh, we've got one where uh, we do the plumbing for the whole pool water cooling. And we show... Um, What's the order of these videos going to be released in? There's been some debate internally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think right now, building a final, final, underscore, three, underscore, final, for real this time <laughs> system is coming next. Okay. And then plumbing. And uh, so plumbing the house and then and plumbing then final state. all five of them into it yeah. is coming next. And then I actually need a bit more time to do a more thorough thermal investigation. So I had all five of the land systems running Fermark simultaneously, which means at about 320, 330 watts per 3080, they have 3080s in them just because they are a banging deal. And I wanted to go EVGA one last time. Yeah. EVGA doesn't have 40 series. Yeah. That's and I pretty also, cool. I also said I wouldn't go 40 series. And I was like, you know what? EVGA, one last time. So all of them have EVGA uh, XC3 3080s in them or something like that. So that's about 320 watts each times five. So with the CPUs as well, we're looking at about 2,000 watts. Now, here's the thing. Alex and Jake talked me into using a heat exchanger instead of doing just the pool loop going directly into the systems. And from fr look, guys, from, from day one, I've known that they are right about that. But I think you guys know that I like to live on the bleeding edge. And what the heat exchanger isn't is living on the bleeding edge because you're going to be giving up some performance. Okay. A heat exchanger operates most efficiently when the difference in temperature between the fluids that are flowing through it is very high. But you got to remember, one of my goals for this project is to cool the room. So... It is actually not great for me, even if it's fine for the system, to have the coolant on the room side be 10 degrees higher than the pool. Yeah. So I think it is possible that post payoff with the heat exchanger... Might come out. I might figure out how to fly a little closer to the sun <laughs> and run the pool. No, and I, just, to, just to make sure you guys understand... Um, it's not pool water, pool water. Yeah. There's yeah. no salt or chlorine. It's a loop that is embedded. It's just, it's just plastic tubing that's embedded in the walls and the floor of the pool. So it, it just loses heat over that in, immense distance to the concrete of the pool and to the ground. Um, this is really cool. It was like super late. It was like five in the morning or something like that. And I was like, okay. So this is neat. I can see the temperature difference 
with the thermal camera of the water going out of the house and coming back in. So obviously it is losing some heat out there. And we reached an equilibrium point where the uh, inside temperature, I think, was... Ugh, I'm going to get some of this wrong. So there's going to be a video and, and we'll get all the details right in that. But um, somewhere between eight and nine degree delta between the inside loop and the outside loop. But what I didn't know was where is the heat being lost? Because the run is far. Like yeah. it's... Is it all... Co I, I think you just said this, but is it all copper piping? There's no copper. Oh. Okay. It's all plastic. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's a mixture of PVC and... Um, think it's PEX. I'm not sure exactly what the stuff they use for like in floor heating is, but like mm. that red stuff that they embed okay. in the in the floor for like in floor heating. It's just the opposite of that. It's in floor well, it's in floor heating the pool, but in floor cooling the water. So uh, anyway, um PEX. So what okay, there you go, PEX. So what I was thinking was wait, there's an access hatch out there. What if I take the thermal camera outside and go right next to the pool? And to my delight, even though it is so far, like we discovered this back when we did whole room water cooling, we weren't actually dissipating any of the flip and heat outside because we were just shedding all of it inside the room with the copper tubing. And I thought I'd have the same problem, even though it's plastic. Obviously, it dissipates some heat. Otherwise, in-floor heating wouldn't work, right? Yeah. But even though it was small there was a difference in the temperature of the water going into the walls of the pool and coming out of the walls of the pool. I, I think it works. <laughs> I actually think... Like, I, I, I actually think it freaking works, which is so exciting. Um, yes, bots in float plane chat says 9 degree delta is significant. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, but what that uh, and what that means is that the room is not that cool. Yeah. Also, I uh, there was a there was a fundamental flaw in the plan because from the start I said, "Look, I want to cool down this room," <coughs> but um, what I didn't really account for was that the vast majority of the heat that I would be removing with this system was net new heat. All the switches and like NVRs and the servers. I'm not. I'm not going to water cool like the hard drives in my server. Yeah. All that heat is not getting dumped into the water, and so all the systems that are dumping heat into the water are being added to the room. So the good news is At it's least not you're hotter. Not increasing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's not substantially not hotter. Much. Yeah. But it's very clear to me that in addition to what I've got going on in there now, I'm going to have to add like a radiator door or even just a janky radiator plumbed to the pool water just like I had before to just take hot air in that hot corner of the room right behind the rack just <laughs> run it through a radiator Minzil in Floatplane Chat said you live in Canada if you want to cool the room uh, just put in a window one problem it's in like the yeah. middle yeah it's well it's not but it also th there's no window going in yeah okay. let me put so, it that way there we go no window going into it so issues there um, and then two uh, that's actually a huge problem in BC is a lot of our housing was built with no air conditioning in mind at all or just cooling in mind at all and now the summers are getting like really unsustainably hot yeah and it's like actually a huge problem yeah so. so many people are are putting in uh move the stupid heat exchanger outside no no that doesn't help that doesn't help because it's there's there's still like the tubing in the reservoir and 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 all that like it's it it's not a bad idea, but no, the heat exchanger is going to stay inside for also for maintenance. Um, the other thing, too, is that a huge part of the point of this was I didn't want to waste the heat. Yeah. I'm paying for the heat anyway, right? When you power a computer, you're paying for heat. So if you could do something useful with it, then you might as well. And obviously, I, you know, I what what I'm going to save like 20 bucks on like the heating bill for the pool. 50 bucks a month probably probably not even that much like yeah maybe maybe i save 20 bucks on the pool heating bill or something like that but that's 20 cool. bucks is 20 good. bucks and you it times was that by a bunch of months yeah it was more it was more just like a proof of, oh i mean i'll never make back what i spent on the implementation of this no uh, if it wasn't for content but it, it would make no sense but it's cool yeah. and the thing is that 
you don't have to do it like this. I think a lot of people watch our videos and kind of go, that's totally impractical. Nobody would ever do it like that. And it's like, yeah, I know. But but you could but you could do it like Have kind you ever of like this. Pimp my ride. <laughs> yeah, like I remember uh, when when we did uh, Terran, uh, old Terran, not new Terran. When yeah. we did old Terran's extreme tech upgrade, he had kind of a janky version of essentially what I'm doing, where I have my system connected to fiber optic cables in a different room. Right. He just like. Yeah. But he just had copper cables, and he just had it like running under his door. But it achieves the exact same thing. It was so cool because I was like, hey, hey, that's that thing that we made that video about, but done for like $23 instead of, you know, $500 or, you know, whatever it costs for a bunch of fiber optic cabling and, uh, uh, and, and you know, in some cases having to have like a contractor run it or, you know, digging around in your crawl space or like, um, like what Ant Venom did. Yeah. When he essentially did whole room water cooling. But just put it in his basement where it was a much shorter run and where he didn't have to have something outside that could, you know, hazardously fall off of a roof at some point, which never happened. No. We took Miraculously, that. I got to it before it fell down. That was not good craftsmanship, what happened with that roof mount. Ask Linus what plan is for winter. Um... Okay, so I think we're going to look into whether it makes more sense to drain the pool to winterize it or um, or just run it at a really low temperature. Like, I think I've heard that if you just run it at, like, 10 degrees or 5 degrees or something like that, that's that's actually pretty good. It has a, it has a cover. Like, it has a, a like, a, not a lid, but it, but it has a cover, which apparently helps with efficiency, like, flipping a lot. Yeah. Um, I am a little bit worried about like dew point and con condensation. Um, however, the heat, heat exchanger might be an advantage then. So here, here's something I don't know. What I do know is that as you go, you know, a couple meters underground, the temperature is basically like kind of fixed year round. And that's one of the big reasons that geothermal heating and cooling works so well, because uh, you can attach a heat pump to it and you can basically extract heat from the ground or um, put heat into the ground, and it's it's limitless in its capacity both ways, um, because it basically is this fixed temperature kind of year round. Um, but what I don't know is whether that applies to two meters down in a pool where the it's kind of has outside air exposure. So probably not. But then if there's water in it, but then if that water is heated a bit or something yeah I'm, I'm not sure i'm not sure exactly where you're where you're dumping most of the heat to because on the one side of the tubes you've got the water and then on the other side of the tubes you've got the earth <laughs> so where's the where's the heat going it's going to basically you know path both. of least resistance yeah, yeah probably probably some both ways but i don't know where the bulk of it is and so i basically my plan and this is a very linus plan is to keep an eye on it as the temperatures fall and um, <laughs> just react. See how that goes. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm definitely going to put antifreeze in it. I don't want it to freeze out there. You know, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ham. I, I, I know, like in the ocean, from like scuba diving, I'm sure you've experienced this. The further down you go, the colder it gets. Um, but I don't I don't know if the pool is really deep enough to have much of that property. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. And I don't know how much of that changes when you cover the pool. Because a lot of that happens from how much sunlight is able to penetrate the water. So if you're covering the pool and it becomes zero anyways, I don't know how much impact that has. Because the water is going to churn to a certain degree. So I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it could be. it could be that if I do ultimately turn to my direct pool cooling system... Mm -hmm. That I might have to have like a like a, a valve, yeah, 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 so that in the winter I'm actually using the heat exchanger just to make sure that I don't, you know, run zero degree or five degree freaking water into my rack and then end up with a bunch of condensation in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah. I, uh, okay. Okay. Speaking of not bad ideas, <laughs> I had another idea because I was sitting here thinking, hey, hold on a second. In the winter, do I really want to put this heat outside? 
Mm. I mean, it got like kind of, you know, it's it's fine. Okay, so you're going to need like a series hold of... Hold on, just hold on. I'm going to get there. <laughs> you know, kind of. Like, you know, obviously if we do keep the pool filled, then it would be better to like you know, have a little bit of heat going in there that's not burning gas for no reason. But then, okay, hold on, hear me out. New pitch. There's a fireplace in the living room that we don't use <laughs> and is still not even hooked up properly because, you know, contractor things. Ah, um, yes. So I pitched to Yvonne. Okay, we create this motorized or like we have like like fans that blow little like pieces of like red and orange and yellow plastic to make it kind of look like a little fire. And then in the back of the fireplace, I just have a radiator with, with fans, fans on, it on it that just blow server room heat <laughs> into the living room all winter. Huh? It's not as stupid as it sounds because get this. The original plan for the server oh, room man. was to run through these you copper Sorry, you should get one of those like kind of crappy, you see stupid commercials for them all the time, but it's like a fan, but the fan blades are screens, and when it spins, it creates an image. Yeah. So it's a, it's a fan blowing the air, yeah. and the fan that's blowing the air has flames on it. Yeah. <laughs> so we have these tubes that go from the server room to the side <laughs> of the house. so bad. We were going to use that to run down to the pool, but then... The, the other contractor, the much worse one, forgot to run two of those tubes. So there was supposed to be four. Two for the solar, hot, uh, hot and cold, and then two for the server room, hot and cold. Well, they only ran the two. So oh. we had to use those two for the solar, solar heating. Yeah, yeah. And then we had to find another path for the pool one, or for the, uh, the server room one. So it went through that conduit that existed back when the original owners of the house had wanted to put pool equipment in the basement. Um, and then that's apparently not best practice anymore, so it's, it's outside in a shed. But anyway, um, so we have those tubes running. They happen to run almost right under the fireplace in the living room. So I even already have the tubes. All we have to do is put some holes in the ceiling and find them. Huh? Holes in the theater room ceiling. No problem. <laughs> Wife approval factor, 10 out of 10. Because it's the theater room, so she doesn't care. Yeah, she shouldn't. Yeah, she probably yeah, wouldn't care about yeah. that anyway. Um... Aborno says, I've always wanted to use my racks excess heat to feed a 3D print enclosure. See? This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. No, Yvonne, Yvonne did not approve the radiator in the fireplace <laughs> plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my like first thought was like just put a TV in front of it and put like a uh, you know the like screen of a of the Yule log fire on it. And I was like, well, that would kind of stop sort of all the airflow and also superheat a a TV, which doesn't sound great. Yeah, yeah, no. The whole the whole point is that it's it's supposed to be a, a radiator that kind of looks like it, it. It doesn't need to look like fire. It just needs to look fire. So we could just paint it red. Red radiator. Think, like, you, know how, you know how the like Dyson fans work? Uh, yeah, oh, those like Airblade ones or whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, I think could... work is a strong word for how they something, but sure. I've never. Are they bad? They're they're very expensive and they're really not very effective compared to just spinning blades. It's, and it's and it's vacuum with pressurized output. Is that how it works? I forget. I've never actually known. That's just what I've assumed. If you could use that same type of system and just have a bit of a like panel gap, maybe that could work. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, it, yeah, it's 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 not it's not happening either way. It's just <laughs> it's just I don't know. I I just I was I I I became infatuated with the idea of utilizing waste heat for something. Yeah. Of course, cuz yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Seems cool. So, you know, if if there was if there was some way that you could transport the heat from your computer to somewhere where you don't have to feel it or that better yet you could use it in some way i just think that's super cool like i um okay i didn't realize this but in some houses there is a there's a loop that just has a separate pump on it that moves water around so that in key places uh like the the main oh it like regulates ensuite bathroom you uh, open up the hot water tap and it like has hot water right away because it just constantly has hot water. I, I had no idea that was even a thing. So in the, in the main bathroom in our house, that was, that was installed by the previous owners. I'd never heard of that before. Like in our old place, it took like a minute sometimes for the, the hot water tap to be hot. Um, 
so, you know, okay, what if I could use my waste heat to like heat that stupid loop that is just burning stupid gas for no stupid reason instead of like, so even in the summer is what, what this is what I'm trying to say. Even in the summer, there are potential uses for, for waste heat. There's, there's sometimes times when you might need heat for something, but the problem with a computer is that, you know, back to what I'd said about the heat exchanger, where part of the challenge is that the difference in temperature is not very high. Like the one that we're using, I think is is rated for its capacity at like it's also many tens of degrees delta between the two sides. Unless you mine or fold, uh, it's also going to be very inconsistent. So you, you wouldn't necessarily want to use it for something or you wouldn't want it to be the only solution for something that's like you're actually going to care about. Yeah. So like that, that causes some issues as well. If it is going to be something you're going to care about, you'd have to have backup systems or whatever else. Yeah. Really? I'm surprised you didn't do Insta hot on every spot. No, that sounds, that sounds expensive and just totally unnecessary. I mean, it, for me, it's, it's less about the cost and more about just kind of the wastefulness of it. I don't think that's really necessary. If that hadn't already existed, um, I, there's no way I would have installed something like that. I think I can wait 30 seconds for hot water. Then again, this is an interesting question. What's more wasteful, the water that you just, the cold water you just dump down the sink while you wait for hot water or keeping that water? I'm actually not sure. I do not know the answer to this, but I do know that we need to tell you about our sponsors. Got them. The show is brought to you today by Corsair IQ Link. Apple just announced they're bringing the revolutionary Type-C connector to the new iPhone 15. Isn't that amazing? No? Well, how about this? This cable from Corsair, our sponsor. <laughs> with Corsair's IQ Link ecosystem, you can make your PC build clean and beautiful with just this one cable. You can create a chain of devices using the same simple connector, all leading to a single IQ Link system hub that can be magnetically attached to your PC case. Each of the hub's two ports can handle up to seven connected devices, reducing cabling complexity. And with a range of products in their ecosystem, like fans, coolers, and power supplies, building a fully connected PC is a breeze. Oh, and of course, you can customize the RGB lighting of all your Corsair devices with their IQ software. Make your life easier and less cluttered and complicated with a build like this one by checking out Corsair's IQ Link smart ecosystem at the link down below. Thanks, Dennis, for that. The show is also brought to you by Ridge X Hennessy. If you have been walking around with a bulky wallet, I can imagine you're probably driving a tasteless car too. Okay, really, Dennis? Got him. Uh, now you have a chance to get rid of both and win a free Bronco with our sponsor, The Ridge. They redefined the traditional wallet with their compact and stylish designs. Uh, Ridge wallets can hold up to 12 cards plus room for cash with either a money clip or an elastic band. And the Ridge is also upgrading your key storage and preventing your keys from jingling. The Ridge key cases can securely hold up to six keys, keeping everything tight and slick. They have over 30 colors and styles, and most importantly, they offer a lifetime warranty. The Ridge and Hennessy Performance are teaming up again for Ridge's third annual summer sweepstakes. You can win amazing prizes like a Hennessy Ford Bronco or $75,000 in cash. No purchase is necessary. You can enter the draw just by signing up with your email or SMS. And starting today until the end of the month, you can get two times the entries for every dollar spent and 10 times the entries for the purchase of new Hennessy products. So head over to Ridge.com slash WAN and get 10 bonus entries by using the code WAN. We're going to have that link down below. Finally, the show is brought to you by AG1. If you find your days are always filled with a busy schedule and you always consume lots of unhealthy food, it's time to give your body a nutrition boost with AG1, our sponsor. AG1 is a convenient supplemental drink that helps you get certain vitamins you may be skipping out on. It's got 17 different vitamins, antioxidants, probiotics, and whole food sourced ingredients. So instead of taking a bunch of different vitamins, all you need is one scoop once a day. Best of all, no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. Uh, Dennis says he is terrified of lots of supplement drinks, but he actually likes the taste. All right. Hey, great. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, cool. Uh, before we partnered up with AG1, Luke had... Oh, you've been drinking it for a while. Yeah. Oh, this just says brief of Luke's thoughts on AG1. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, When I changed my diet really heavily, Whoa. I wasn't sure about nutrient stuff. So I looked into how I could get solutions for that. Right. These guys A came literal up. solution. Yeah, actually, quite, quite genuinely. Uh, and yeah, it's been pretty good. I don't know. I don't have a lot to say about it, but I've continued to use it because it seems good. Okay, cool. 
They have over 30,000 five-star reviews and are recommended by top health experts and performers. It's also vegan, paleo, and keto-friendly, and each serving costs less than $3 a day. If you're looking for a simpler investment for your health, try AG1 and get five free AG1 travel packs and a free one-year supply of vitamin D with your first purchase. Just go to drinkag1.com slash WAN show slash WAN show or check the link down below. Oh, yes, yes, slash WAN show or check the link down below. All right. Oh, it's time to do three merch messages. Okay, before we do that, we should probably talk about the new item this week. Yeah. Luke. <laughs> yeah. I didn't let him look at it before the show. Okay. Okay, you can you can play with it now. What drives me nuts about this is I'm I'm gonna have to buy one for my girlfriend or she'll kill me. Cause she's gonna want to match them. I know, right? <laughs> it's so cruel. <laughs> You've, you've forced so many purchases onto people with this. I know, right? I'm, pu- I'm putting mine on, too. You're going to put it on? Well, yeah. I'm, yeah, of course. Oh, does it go, like, over? we got a match for the, I mean, it can, it can anything never, you want. I've never had a onesie. Technically, I would say, or generally, I would say, um, no, I wouldn't wear clothes under it. It's um, definitely nice and soft and comfortable. Okay, here, you so know you what? I'm, totally I'm just... gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm going down You're to going underwear. Full send. Yeah, I'm, I'm going down to underwear. I mean, they can't tell. I could just be miming. I could just be miming what I'm pretending to do right now. Dan, want to hit me with a merch message while I, I get uh, changed you, you real can quick? Kind of like see. Sure, wherever I, I can. I don't uh, think you can. No, for me, my so eyes. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, do. yeah, you do. You do whatever works for you. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going onesie. I'm going to be comfortable for Wan Show after dark today. Okay. Uh... Hi, LLD. Happy WAN Friday. Question. After the computer store video, how did the logistics team feel when the truck came back? And what's the plan for all that stuff now that it's in inventory? Okay, so I have multiple, multiple answers for that. First of all, uh, logistics, not impressed. Um, but that's nothing compared to how unimpressed accounting and procurement were. <laughs> um, it turns out that you know, without getting flagged for all kinds of, you know, auditing, um, doing all the reporting for something like this is, is very time consuming and very complicated. I mean, we're still really glad we did it. Um, Keith was even aside from what he said in the video, just, you know, thrilled with the whole thing. I mean, it's, uh, this is stock that, you know, for, you know, whatever he might've said in the video about his, (laughs) his, uh, his, People still buy those. <laughs> that people were still interested in this stuff. I mean, I think he knew he was never getting rid of any of this stuff for any dollars, let alone, you know, anywhere near full full sticker, um, which, you know, ultimately I did pay. I paid a lot more than what stickers should have been for a lot of those items. Um, so, you know, we're still glad. We're glad we did it. It was a, it was a really cool idea. I've had a lot. I actually have had quite a few people ask me, like, where did it come from? I was at the dentist um, and I had to meet my family for lunch. And, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I had to meet my family for lunch and I didn't have the car, so I had to walk to the restaurant and I passed it and I was like, yeah, man, shops like this, how, like, how does this, how does this still exist? You know, how, how is it, how is this, how does this work? I, you know, what are these things on the shelf? Why are they there? What's the story behind every, you know, archeological PC item on this shelf? And, um, I figured, you know what the best you know what would be really cool um, is if someone just came in here and bought all this stuff so that they could get rid of it and they could have new stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm someone. Um, so that happened over a year ago. I, I thought it was about six months. I told Keith. I was like, yeah, I poked my head in like six months ago. And he's like, oh, I would have thought I would notice that. Like, like I, I watched your channel. I know who you are. And I was like, hold on a second. Maybe it wasn't six months because it was when I used to go to that dentist near there. And I've done two appointments at my new one, and they're at least six months apart. So it must have been over a year ago. So I, I, so I popped my head in and was like, oh, yeah, we should do this. And then Tanner reached out to him six months ago. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. so that six-month timing makes no sense. Yeah, so Tanner reached out to him six months ago and then intentionally ghosted him so that he would have no idea that we oh. were actually doing it. So, so he basically vetted the guy, made sure he thought he'd be camera ready, made yeah. sure he'd be okay with us you know, coming in and taking over his store for the day and then was like radio silence so that it could be both okay and pre-approved, but also a surprise. Uh, so su- super cool. I forget what the original question was. Um, oh yeah. Logistics. Uh, how'd they feel about it? So anyway, really glad we did it. 
but there's definitely some been some challenges to overcome and i think this saga is far from over we have some ideas for what to do with the stuff i think we've got some video concepts like i think it'd be super cool to do a video just building a computer out of my hall um i also was oh man hold on i've got i've got some ideas that i just like jotted down in the middle of the night and emailed to myself one sec so much of what happens in my brain just gets emailed to myself because that's the only way that I know how to function. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I guess someone saw when I stood up, they said, can confirm Luke wears LTT underwear. I actually wear no other kinds. Yep. I wear only LTT underwear. I thought you were going to stop it. Oh, no. Man. Oh, man. No, no, no. That's how, when I sleep. How's this for a video concept? Now you have a onesie. <laughs> yeah. We go through and play a little game where I try to guess the eBay listing price of all of it combined. Oh no. And then someone actually adds it up and uh, we see how close I can get. Ooh. See like how hosed you got? Yeah. Cuz I'm pretty sure I watched the video. I'm pretty sure you got pretty hosed. <laughs> There's a lot of things in there where he was like, "Oh, this amount." And I was like, Phew. "Sheesh." Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. No, I can't reveal this one because it w it might ruin it. Um oh, What about that? <laughs> that's pretty good yeah pretty i don't good. know that might be pretty good um oh video title he told me this was indestructible i disagree <laughs> for that laptop. that laptop and we yeah. basically just like kind of do a like a, a uh, review how much does it take yeah to get it to a point of being destructible because like the thing's not particularly no offense to keith's pricing model um not particularly valuable yeah. at this point in time yeah so i think if we were to if we were to just you know run some generally speaking i'm i'm opposed to destruction of working hardware um it's it's sort of against the principles of our channel but i think i could make an exception yeah. for an indestructible laptop i yeah, mean destruction test or a thing is that a challenge total leak in floatplane chat said ask some of the younger staff what the items are oh that's so depressing, and I'm going to write it down now. <laughs> it's really good. I think that's really fantastic. Um, try to get... Or, like, try to get them to even, like, install some of them. Try get stuff you. like that. Just ask them what they are. Try to get them to actually, like, use them or install them or do things like that. I think that'd be pretty good. That's freaking hilarious. All right. So, I mean, honestly, I could spend the entirety of next week just making follow-up content. But then the problem is that, like, what about, you know, other videos? I feel like people might feel like we're milking it a bit. But also, all these concepts are really good. Like, they're just good videos. It doesn't matter that they're, like, a sequel to yeah. something that was successful. I, I don't yeah. know. I just... It's I also just a great video. Like, I didn't realize... I, I watched it, and then when I was done, I was, like, smiling, like, the whole time. Cause it was yeah. Just, it, was, it was heartwarming, but also just hilarious and, like, it was a interesting lot of fun. and... Whatnot, but I didn't realize it was freaking 34 minutes. I added the gambling element. I didn't realize that until now. <laughs> Four o'clock the night before the shoot. I oh, was that like, was a great idea. I was like, Tanner, we need... Made it a lot better. We need a way to keep this engaging throughout. We can't just, like, watch me get quoted prices and put items in a bin for... Yeah. You know, at that time, we were aiming for, like, 15 to 20 minutes for the video. Okay, okay, what can what can we do to spice this up a little bit. Okay, games of chance. Um, swing by the dollar store in the morning. Just get anything that you could conceivably turn into a game of chance. So like the pull the rope one, sure. or like, you know, the, 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 the custom, roll, custom dice, the, the putting, the crappy darts. Yeah, they, exactly. Darts. Oh my goodness, they were awful. There's more footage of them being <laughs> awful. Um, We've got one float plane exclusive up already with extra footage from oh, the nice. from from that video, and then uh, there will hopefully be more. Actually, we've got two videos up. We have one um, that's from the shoot, and then we have a second one that is logistics receiving everything. <laughs> so if you want to see firsthand uh, what that was like, oh yeah, unloading the tech shop. Wow, I didn't see this. Yeah, and then I think there's probably going to be more at some point but uh that's not a guarantee i've got to talk to the the social team about what they have going on 
Uh, oh, yeah, wait, why is this? Hello? Oh, right, 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 right. Exclusives have their own tab now. Uh, behind the scenes, unloading the tech shop. Yeah, so the first thing we see is, I think, like, Cal and Ann being like, um, okay, <laughs> someone on the main account has watched this already. <laughs> Brother. Brother, here's my stuff. <laughs> Just ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Our community response to this one is extremely overwhelmingly positive. That's awesome. Nice. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> my, I don't know. My mind is so fried this week. Team feel when the truck came back. Right. And what's the plan for all the stuff now that you have it? Yeah, yeah. So lot, lots of different plans. I, uh, I th Oh, right. One idea we had, and tell me if you think this is a good idea, was to... We never do, like, signed merchandise. Mm-hmm. I think we've done it a couple times with Lambo stuff. Yep. But other yeah, than that, a couple that, times with giveaways too, but not not purchasable. Other than that, we've never really done it. And I I I had someone internally pitch to me, "Hey, what if we what if we sell the items as just a signed item and then it's kind of like a random crapshoot what you're going to get?" So most people will probably get a cable or something, but some people will get Old school a monitor, GPU, monitor or a Xeon server or a 3080 so you're gonna, or a TV. You're making a real life loot box. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I have no idea. Is that, is that stupid or is it smart? Because it'll be nowhere near what we paid, just to be very clear. This is not some kind of, like, ingenious money-making scheme. I suspect we walked out of there with somewhere in the neighborhood of, like, 300 to 700 items. So even if it was, like, 25 bucks or something like that for, for a signed piece of this video or whatever, um, but what, what, what would that work out to? Let's say, let's say an even I think, 500. I think you should decide the price. Okay, chill. Uh, I think you should decide the price after you figure out what the eBay value actually was. Oh, interesting. And then we base it on the eBay value. Yeah, that's not a like bad idea. Average out the eBay value. I don't know if we're actually going to do that video though, because like... It's a lot of work. A lot of work. It's actually and a ton of work. More importantly, I don't know how interesting that content is. It feels like a part of a video instead it of a It feels like a short. It's a ton of video and it feels like a part of a video. Yeah, yeah. or it's a ton, ton of work and it feels like part of a video. Um... Donate to Extra Life. Could be an easy way to just like kind of get rid of it because I don't think we want this stuff sitting around forever. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing is right now it is very in the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The bigger issue is not unloading it. The bigger issue is walking around it right now. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. So okay, if there's 500 items and we said it's okay, it's 25 bucks for a signed piece of this video. That would be twelve twelve thousand dollars, which is a fraction of what we paid. And I think probably kind of both a realistic um, actual value for that stuff, <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's the main thing. I think that's probably a fairly realistic actual value for that stuff. Like, there is some expensive stuff in there. Like, there's there's more than one 30 series graphics card and stuff like that. But the vast majority of it is basically. I mean, the distribution e will probably be pretty similar to what you would actually get from a loot box. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Most of it's cables. I'm really concerned about how to ship. Because right now, we're not really set up to just ship random stuff. Like, we're not an eBay store, so we don't just have a bunch of, like, those expanding foam Fair bag sizing. things. Oh, and yeah, 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 we don't just have packing peanuts. Like, nothing we sell on the store is really fragile, and it all comes in its own individually packaged boxes. So a lot of the time, you'll see the, like, the, 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 main, the main carton that has smaller boxes in it won't have a ton of packing material in it because, I mean, w what this is going to break inside its box, I mean... I'm sure I'm sure a courier somewhere is up to the challenge, but generally speaking, it doesn't really happen. Yeah, we'll pay more than twenty five dollars for the Mac four G Mac G four cube. Well, no, that's the whole point, uh, though. Yeah, you won't get to pick if you get the G four cube. Oh, right, that was one of the other video concepts: doing a sleeper build in the G four cube. I think I actually got a deal on that. I don't even know if it works, but uh, here let's let's 
Let's eBay that right now. I know I didn't get a deal on Buzz Lightyear, but I think I got a deal on the G4 Cube. Okay, the Buzz Lightyear thing was hilarious. This is just the power adapter? Whoa. Hold on a second. Wait. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, hold on. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, new listing. Hold on. Yeah, this is 15, 15 bids. bids. Why do with people want this? Nine days left. Why do people want these? Hold on. Two speakers surround. Hold on. Power adapter? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. Did I get a deal? Hold on. Well, wait. This is. Oh, wait. This is just the case? Are these super collectible? Why? They're a they're a pretty interesting period of, of Apple. And no I don't way. think they sold very well either. There's like none. Yeah, you got a rare computer there. Holy bud. crap! I actually got one thing that the poster's worth twenty bucks. They're uh they're pretty special. Oh sick. So then are they so special? A pencil drawing of one. <laughs> I'm sure they don't sell many of those. Yeah. Okay, hold on. The power bricks are 150 bucks. Okay, are these things so special that people would be really upset if I did a sleeper build in one, though? That I'm not sure about, but I'm not entirely sure you should let it through your fingers just yet. Okay. Well, I'm not committed to I'm not committed to uh, you know the, the 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 signed loot box thing. I think it'd be even cooler if the G4 cube was the sleeper though. So we do a sleeper build and then we do the like signed loot box thing and instead of getting the G4 cube you get a sleeper gaming PC Oof. in the G4 cube. What if you uh, hand built? Oof. What if you just like reproduce the cube? Maybe slightly larger with a sleeper build in it. I don't think we'd be able to do that. It's it's. Mm. Have you have you looked at it lately? Yeah. It's it's basically a work of art. Yeah, isn't it's it? beautiful. Um, okay. What is oh, the G four cube is. Yeah, people are very very split in the audience over whether it's okay to. Uh, I don't think so. To yeah. gut that thing and and it's pretty special. <sighs> Why is it special? It's like art almost apparently they only sold about a hundred thousand of them or something like that yeah it doesn't sound very special to me luke <laughs> this man is so jaded look why is it art it's a box you're you're too mad for someone who's wearing an adorable <laughs> onesie right now he looks too comfy to be this angry i am actually pretty comfy i think i got actually tired after i put it on because i was like <laughs> i felt cozy you even got it on over the headphones yeah. you're ridiculous yeah. i'm like uh, i am fully chilling out right now it's made out of the underwear material it's i oh because it is really soft yeah that's why it's like soft and stretchy and, stretchy and, and stuff it's quite nice. Yeah, we put a bunch of we put probably too much work into this for how many I expect us to sell. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the team was really excited about this product, and so we we did like a, a whole bunch of rounds of sampling to just to get it just right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's it's pretty nice. So yeah. it's underwear. It's it's like full body underwear. <laughs> Essentially, yeah, it's the longest underwear. Yeah. Um. Do you want another merch message? I sh sure, yeah. I forgot what I was even responding to at this point. Hit me. Okay, hold on. Would you have to destroy it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, you'd have to. You'd have to significantly modify it. Oh, oh right. I've I put up a poll on Floatplane. Let's have a look at the results. Ah, uh, show results. Okay, to sleeper build, sixty percent say yes only. Okay, so here's the thing. This kind of poll is not really just majority rules. Like yeah. when we asked about, when, okay, yeah. when we asked about uh, posting exclusives that we had already produced during the uh, production break, I think about 60% said yes. But based on that 40% said no, we made the call to not do it because the no kind of has more weight when 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 it, when it's something very significant i guess is what i'm trying to say if it was 98% yes 2% no then those no's get drowned out a little bit but there's it's not as simple as just 
Okay, 51% say yes. Okay, we do it. What if the parts don't work? Yeah, does that? Okay, okay, hold on. Here, let's let's try it. Let's this try it a, again. This is a conversation currently going on in Philippine chat, and I, I kind of, I think that's interesting. I fix? I know fix? Oh. Sleeper. No, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hiring spend again more to fix it. Spend more money on, on this yeah. overpriced cube, yeah. You could you could let people that care about this uh, thing have the parts that don't work because maybe they can restore them or something. It would probably be good to, uh, if you do do a sleeper build in it, then make the parts available because I'm pretty sure those are difficult to come by. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Um, like uh, for your phone, uh, you know, that was parts that I managed to get. Oh, do you have all the parts for that? It will be here Monday, I hope. Oh, fantastic. I bought an entire phone. Guess what? Wait, what? Yeah. That was the way? Oh, yeah. Super cheap. Oh. Just an entire new phone with a broken big screen. Oh, perfect. Because uh, my big screen works. Your big screen works, so we can replace literally everything else. Yeah, it's going to be a Linus and Dan extravaganza. Uh, as it turns out, I do need to fix my Fold 3 that uh, fell in the pool, because there's some footage that we need for a video ironically a video about my computer breaking um that is on that phone like i didn't need any any of the family stuff i had actually backed it up about three weeks prior but and so i was already going to do the video with dan anyway because i thought it was really interesting to just do like a phone repair video but then we discovered that i had selfie shot some stuff that had not been ingested in that three weeks before it died in just and so we actually do need to get the data off it. The good news is, based on the symptoms I've seen, I think it's just a busted battery. And then Dan also found some corrosion on one of the daughter boards. Yeah, um, it might be a little bit more severe. We don't know yet. It seems like definitely it wants to have two batteries, and one of them is just absolutely puffed to, to maximum. It's so puffed that one of the displays, we're not going to have to uh, heat up to get the adhesive loose it's all it, it removed half of the glued on display which was really nice yeah uh, and thankfully that's, that's a feature not a bug <laughs> uh, and it seems like that is the side that, that may have got far more uh water in it than than the other one which might be okay so we'll see we, yeah, and, we will see and the side that got a lot less water is the main board that's the important one yeah. with the storage chips on it mm -hmm. and the soc so so i'm i'm pretty hopeful honestly speaking and um what I'm excited for is if uh -oh. the main board doesn't work, we have a bunch of reflow tools. And so what we'll have to do, because I got you a working phone, but it's all broken, we'll have to take the SOC, uh, sorry, we'll have to take the memory chips and transplant that. them. That won't work. That'll be uh, that'll be the hail mary. I no, I real I I sincerely we we can just like message drive savers or something. Hey hey, does do they? Because if you if you if you oh if you care that much yeah if, then yeah if you no I, I don't I don't mean to send it to them I just mean we could just ask them is there any point doing this because I think the answer is no I think if you decouple the controller from the NAND chips um, the new controller no longer knows where anything is and just take the controller too uh, well the controller should be on the SOC just take the SOC okay right but then if it, but. Do you see where we're going? Yeah, I see where we're going. We're going in down a rabbit hole. Yeah, uh, that's why it's a hail mary. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna go down. I don't a think we'll hole. need to. I think I would rather. I would rather just reenact me in the server room discovering that my computer is broken. I think that would be better. Honestly, we'll see. We'll I, see. I can. I. Can, I'm hopeful. I put I'm the hopeful. act in reenactment. So I'm in my computer room right now. I can't believe this. My system. It just. It just. I was in the middle of using it and it turned off. What the what the heck? I thought I'm a tech tips man. Why is my computer broken? I'm pretty sure I can pull it off. Uh, hold on, we got a second merch message of the three. This is going very smoothly. Uh, can you ask Luke how he got that Starfield Constellation Edition watch? Uh, I, I bought it. He just he just I bought don't believe it. you. I actually did. Hold on a second. Oh my! Just hold on. A oh second. no! Hold on. What have you done with Luke? Hold on a second. Oh, he's That's a $300. Did you, did oh, no, you also get the game, and you get 
other stuff too. I've bought collector's editions before. Okay, this is that's not new. that's true. He does buy physical copies of games. This is a thing he does. Yeah, dude, the physical copy is not a disc, but it's like a it's a credit stick from the game. It's actually kind of cool. Why are these pictures so small? This is stupid. This is kind of dumb. Yeah. Wait. So are you wearing it right now? It's right here. Oh, what? Why is it sitting on your keys? Well, because I took it off because the onesie sleeve goes all the way. Oh. I didn't want to like make it look weird. So what? It, what? What kind of watch is it? Is it smart or is it just like? Uh, it's, oh, it's a s- smart. Okay, so it's. I call it a last, 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 last gen smartwatch. I see. Yeah, but it's like actually kind of nice. Oh, so it doesn't have a touch screen. No. Cool. Four so buttons it, around it. The left side is up and down. Top right, I think, is like settings, and then bottom right is, I think, back. Cool. Definitely needs a leather strap. I th- there's another strap option. I don't remember what exactly it is. Well, it's I, just standard. You can get any strap. I think it looks great. It has a step counter on it. Sure. It shows your notifications on the screen. You can change your music on your phone with it. Heck yeah. Yeah. All right. Hello, DLL. Off topic, but will the Badminton Center have rental rackets? Yes. Yeah, I think it's really silly that a lot of places don't have rental rackets and rental shoes. It's like such a, a nominal investment that pays for itself so quickly. How could you possibly not? I, I just, I can't fathom it. Um, just it. I think one of the challenges is that a lot of uh, sports facilities are run by sports people. And not business people. <laughs> and like to be clear, I don't even mean like 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 business business monsters, you know, like nickel and diming everything or whatever. I just mean sort of just generally just financial efficiencies and things. Or general efficiencies. Like I, you know, to to me, it's just uh, it, it's just a no brainer that okay, you can get a decent racket for like eighty Canadian dollars. So that's like sixty U.S. dollars. Your cost is less than that. Let's assume your cost is like $45 or 40 bucks. You can rent that racket out for like $5, 10 bucks. So in, in somewhere between four and 10 rentals, you have completely covered your cost on it. And everything from there is brand new money you would have not obtained if you, just, if you didn't make that small investment. Um, that's just very obvious to me that you just need to do it. Um, yes, badminton has specific shoes, bots. They're for the court. They're court shoes. You don't want to scuff the... You wear them the when court. you get a parking ticket. <laughs> oh. I was trying uh. to figure out how to make that into a court joke, and I couldn't. <laughs> this man's a professional. Okay. Uh, no. I got one more, maybe slightly longer one if you want, or we'll sure. save it for later. Um, let's see. Hi, DLL. Apple's proprietary M chips are very powerful and efficient. Why don't we see Intel and AMD start having RAM as part of the system on the chip? DDR5 should run much faster in this case. Oh, man. Um, with, uh, hold on. Eventually, everything hold on. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry, yeah, hold on, hold so on, hold one on. One big board. I, I, Risk future. This yeah. is a thing Risk I found. Risk future. Risk is good. Yay. Uh, crap. I can't find it right now. But if you actually, if you look at the, if you watch the video we made recently called starting at is the biggest lie in tech or something like that. Um, there's an Asus laptop that I believe is either available now or will be available very soon that uses a very similar, um, Ram on package Asus laptop here. I, I really would like to find it. Dang it. I do not want this future. I want upgradability and interchangeability. I, I drives can't, me mental. I can't find it. The point is, it's coming. It's coming now. Uh, it's. I mean, it's and, and it's not just laptops. Like you know, we kind of. Oh, it's everything. Yeah, it's everything not, that's configurable. It, it's 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 not even. It's not. Yeah, it's it's even in the data center, where we're seeing we're seeing chips that have HBM right on them. Well, that's not upgradable. Right, whether it's like Nvidia's um, uh, uh, Grace Hopper or Grace Super Chip or whatever it's called, uh, I think Intel has some stuff coming. Um, it, 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 it's 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 coming, and the reality of it is, this is reflective of how the users of these products use them, and not just something that's being pushed on us by the manufacturers. Like I remember my mind being 
blown the first time someone told me that in a data center, like in a scale data center, like that someone like a Google might run or an Amazon, when a server is bad, if a stick of RAM goes bad, it is not uncommon for them to rip that server out, put a new one in, and basically just send that to the scrap the storage and uh, put it in a heap for you know whoever our partner is who flips these things on eBay. You get rid of it. It's gone. It's out. Whole server, not not a drive. Whole server. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't they just have an IT room where they like fix them? And the answer was, at that scale, it's not a good use of time. It's a better use of time to just throw in a known good, brand new working server and not deal with that because they have enough to do. And I, the, 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 the DIYer in me just, just about died hearing that. But then if that's true, if that's the case, at least in some, at least in some places, uh, at real scale, they do this with entire racks of kit, not just servers. So yeah, we have this topic later in the doc, which is Intel's Meteor Lake launches in December. Um, but people have linked articles talking about how uh, it has LPDDR5 on chip, LPDDR5X. Intel demos Meteor Lake CPU with on package LPDDR5X is a Tom's Hardware article that yeah, I have gone through, but yeah. Uh, there, there's one Asus laptop that we pointed out in that video, though, that I believe is already using uh, on-package memory. Or if not on-package, it's very, very close. Yeah. Um, and they, in, by doing that, they were able to run at much, much higher frequencies compared to running in a DIMM or even uh, being soldered to the main board, but farther away. Uh, just the signal integrity is so much better. So, so right. So back to the servers for a second. This coupling of CPU to memory is reflective then of the use case. I mean, most people treat their computer like a microwave. And I know this is this is the kind of thing that I think is hard for us to wrap our brains around. But for most people, when their computer is dead, the computer is dead. Yeah, yeah. And you Doesn't can take why. it to a repair shop. But as we know, if you've ever taken something to a repair shop, I mean, they want 60 bucks to put in a memory module, right? So imagine how much it costs if you want them to substantially repair the computer it actually doesn't necessarily make financial sense to rep to have that computer repaired by someone else. It makes sense for us because we're going to fix it ourselves, right? Are you trying to get something to Jacob Danes? Yeah. The uh, former leader of the Pirate Party of Canada? <laughs> we're in the presence of royalty. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> um, Let's see how this goes. Is this to do with the buzzing? Are we like trying to figure yeah. it out right now or something? Yeah. What is he even doing here? What time is I can't, it? I actually can't let you log into my phone. I'm sorry. Oh. There's like multiple, not even work related A lot of needs. <laughs> <laughs> Look how red he is. His mom watches this show. That's just, the best part. Just wait for them with the ones. <laughs> Look how red he is. That took no time. <laughs> Did I hit a nerve at all? I was going to say, if you wanted to, like, text it, you could do that. I just can't let you on to the actual phone itself. That is so funny. Do you need to do funny. something to it? Is there, like, a... Do you need dev mode? We'll, we'll do it when you're not on camera. Okay, sounds good. All right. Um, <laughs> anywho. You don't have to do that. <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> right, right. So so this is reflective of the way that people are using this hardware anyway. Right, right, right. Uh, consumer technology, right? So people don't people don't upgrade stuff. Yeah. They don't repair stuff because it's not cost effective. If you're going to spend $300 repairing a computer you bought for $1,000 five years ago, it's probably not even worth $300. And something else might fail now. And, and whether it would or wouldn't, I could see that being the mentality. Well, if the, if the transmission's going, then probably the, you know, the, I'm going to need to change all the belts soon anyway. And then, you know, probably the, the power windows are going to start jamming. Realistically, you know... Uh, at what point does, whether it's a car or a computer or whatever else, at what point does it just turn into a money pit and it's better to start over new? And I think that whether it's, uh, um, whether it's true or not, a lot of people have that perception of computers. So if people are just going to go, hey, my computer's slow, I need a new one anyway, 
then I think from the manufacturer's standpoint, they're sitting there going, okay, well, this is slower, which makes us less competitive. It costs more, which makes us less competitive. And people aren't even asking for this. Why are we doing this? And so, you know, in some cases, I do think Apple does things that I then get very frustrated by because they weren't necessary and the rest of the industry just goes there. Mm -hmm. But in this case, they're probably just ahead of the curve. We were headed there anyway. I mean, we've been talking about this ever since, what was it? Like fifth gen, I think. I don't fifth necessarily... gen core. It was rumored that Intel would solder desktop CPUs to motherboards. And we were, we were mad about it. I mean, I think justifiably so. But it was, it's been clear the writing's been on the wall for the better part of a decade now. So maybe writing is on the wall in regards to who's going to purchase the thing, which is going to drive engineering decisions at, at companies like this. But I would say I still don't think it's necessarily a good thing um because someone could repair it eventually even if the initial consumer yeah. isn't going to repair it no you're that right doesn't mean that someone couldn't repair it eventually tell me this okay i'm totally pivoting a little bit here mm. in the world we live in today with security vulnerabilities being as impactful as they are and as widespread as they are should we be running 10 year old processors or should they just go to the scrapper and retrieve the gold? Uh, um, I think for individual consumers, I think a lot of the CPU level vulnerabilities that we've had are not really that big of a deal. Yet. To be completely honest. Yet. Sure. Fair enough. I just... Uh, but a lot of them have required targeted attacks, if I'm remembering correctly. Sure. Okay. Um, so... Speaking of targeted attacks... I don't know. Uh, did you know that we would need someone's permission to drive by their house with a password cracking server and break into their Wi-Fi because it's illegal? Not surprised. Why'd I bring that up? I would have just done it anyways. No reason. I was. I didn't care. Anywho, <laughs> have I? Like have if I... it was a really powerful password cracking server. Oh, you're gonna try to hit me? I don't know. I just the people and good luck. People exist, and yeah. uh, really powerful password cracking servers exist. Yeah, from Camino, hypothetically. Right. Yeah, uh, if a company called Camino existed, then maybe they would have a really powerful server that could be used for cracking passwords. <laughs> I thought this was. I thought you were referencing something I had said no. a, a bit ago. But okay, sounds like no. Ah, oh, we've got some good videos coming out in the next little bit here. <laughs> Like seriously, we've got, uh, I reviewed one just before the WAN show, um, checking out LaserDisc. I had only had one experience with LaserDisc and it was extremely brief. Not even, I didn't even get to watch a whole movie. Uh, so we got a, have you ever tried LaserDisc? No. You know how big they are, right? Uh, aren't they like records? Basically? Yeah, they're record size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they look like giant CDs, like novelty <laughs> sized CDs. Um, I've and, never actually seen one in person. And they have I movies on them. I know about them. Yeah, you can store like an hour of footage per side. <laughs> so if you watch a two-hour movie, you actually have to get up in the middle and flip it. Lord of the Rings is like four discs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and they're, they're, they're double-sided, so it's uh, so it's yeah, it's two hours per disc, but it's one hour per side. So you're gonna be you're gonna be getting you're gonna be getting up to flip your precious over pretty often, I think. Yeah. So Lord of the Rings, uh, wait, Lord of the Rings, the two towers runtime is two hours and fifty nine minutes. With that said, um, Lord of the Rings was never released on Laserdisc, so it's not an issue. But no, I know. I just think it would be funny. Gone with yeah. the Wind sure was, and that's like a three and a half hour movie or something like that. So you'd be getting up like four times to, or five times to flip the disc or whatever the math works. No, four times, I think. Um, anyway, uh, there were, uh, just before anyone jumps in with the, you know, correction, uh, there were more advanced players that had read heads on both sides. But you still had to get up and change the disc. If the movie's longer than two hours, which a lot of movies yeah, that's, are. That's not the extended. I'm trying to find the actual extended edition times. But e either way, regardless, it's long. Yeah, so that video is coming out, I think, this weekend. Uh, we have another one coming this weekend on RF blocking paint. So we found this site that kind of peddles in um, digital smog, like conspiracy yeah. uh, uh, cures and, and remedies. And they have RF blocking paint that you can use to paint your room to keep the to keep the 5G out. Brilliant. Um, 
it's I don't want to spoil too much, but it works shockingly well. Really? Yeah. It's actually kind of cool. Yeah. So it's the first. Would you say this is the first legit use of the RF, uh, the EMC chamber? Like it's in video? No. No. Oh, he's eating. Is there, yeah, he's having yeah. some dinner. Doesn't the wall it, block the 5G, though? No, no. The 5G millimeter wave, yeah, it could be blocked by a piece of by this tree. this yeah. garment mm -hmm. um but a non-millimeter wave no no it, it can like pass through stuff is there yeah a bunch of people in chat are asking this too um it's not lead paint is it oh yeah oh oh well yeah that's yeah yeah, yeah like i took it and i brought it with me like this wow no it's not lead wow. paint you fucks. Wow. <laughs> wow. i believed it <gasps> Oh man, come on! The extended guys. times are three hours and forty-eight minutes for fellowship, three hours and fifty-five minutes for two hours, and four hours and twenty-three minutes for Return of the King. Okay, so hold, 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 hold. okay, so for, for Return of the King, hold on. <laughs> One side, two sides, <laughs> two hours, three days, three side, four side. So you have to get up. So you have to put it in. You have to get up to change it. That's one getting up. You have to get up to put in the second disc. You have to get up to flip the second disc, and you have to get up to put in the third disc. If it existed, you would have to get up four <laughs> times during the movie, including... How, how long was it? Four hours and... Uh, four hours and 23 minutes. Including one time, 23 minutes before the end of the movie, to basically just watch the epilogue, essentially. <laughs> Yikes. That's pretty epic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, we're supposed to do some more topics, eh? Wolfick says, here's the question. How many movies are even less than an hour? Oh, no. Yeah, so you're no. going to be flipping no matter, matter what. what you're watching. Unless you have one of the fancy dual head oh. ones. Yeah. Whoa. So it it doesn't even flip it itself. It just starts playing. So there's like maybe a blip. And there were like for commercial, there were commercial solutions, like really advanced stuff where you it had like changers. Remember CD changers? Well, there were laser disc changers, but it was not for movies. It was for like karaoke. Yeah, one of the big benefits of Laserdisc was it was, to my knowledge, the earliest home hmm. format to support multiple audio tracks. My was dad used to run it. Uh, it. Like one of its major adoptions was karaoke because you can have all of these tracks on one big disc and then you want to go to the next one? Well, it's right here on the disc. Done. Instant. Every single time. You know? It's awesome. Plus video. I'm pretty sure that came through the mic, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, for karaoke, uh, they would have entire libraries, and it was so cool because you could have the vocal track and the music track separated, which for karaoke I think has pretty obvious benefits. Um, anywho, we should probably do another topic or two because we have sure. sort of oh oh what I think we should probably do this topic. What topic? The one I highlighted. I can't find it. Oh, You'll find I it. Found it. Whoop. Womp. I'm sad. I'm genuinely sad. We have made the difficult decision to not move forward with LTX 2024. Um, there are four key reasons. Uh, one, the vast majority of our company does not focus on events. Um, and while our core competencies like technology, media production um, do overlap somewhat with event running, the vast majority of our time and effort is spent on other things, which means that we do not have well-established processes and workflows and running events at a large scale um, <sighs> requires well-established processes and workflows or you end up with a lot of inefficiency and you end up with a lot of stress. So that's I, I, the biggest reason, but also very closely related to the next reason, which is also the biggest reason, and that's crunch. Um, while there is a lot of work that can be done in advance of an event like LTX, there's also an enormous amount of work that has to be done in the days or even the hours immediately before the doors open. This puts a ton of strain on the entire team. Um, another big reason is cost. Um, you know, I want to be transparent with you guys. That's, that's, that's the way we run this company. That's the way we run this channel. Uh, LTX 2023 was profitable, which is good. But there's also an enormous opportunity cost compared to focusing on our regular activities, uh, meaning that prioritizing LTX doesn't necessarily make the most sense. And remember, part of that opportunity cost is not just money. Part of it is also 
process and and quality of life for the team and all those things. I mean, I even said on WAN show at LTX 23, when Luke asked me the hard question of, is it coming back? I talked about this. I talked about the crunch. Uh, I talked about how even if it does make money, that doesn't mean it necessarily makes sense. Um, I asked him then because I was trying to get him to commit to it before he thought about it logically. No, I had already been thinking about it yeah, a that lot. Sucks. Yeah. Um, number four is it's not all about money. Of course, LTX was born out of a desire to serve the community and other creators. But again, it's clear that for the investment we made into LTX, which was very substantial, there are many other opportunities that we could pursue for collaborations and community engagement that might be more exciting and don't cause the same degree of strain for the people that work on the event. So that's what it pretty much comes down to. Uh, we do have some alternative things to be excited about. Uh, one of them is whale land. Um, we're, we are going to continue doing whale lands, um, aiming for anywhere from 200 to 300 attendees per one. I'd like to do them more often than just once a year. Uh, personally, I'd be down to do it once every couple months, once every few months. I've had some people approach me internally and say, hey, they think that's too much and it won't be special anymore or something like that. I I honestly think it would be in some ways more special. I think it'd be just such a, such a just hang out, um, just kind of break the routine. The LTX was a really cool event for the fans as a whole, but Whale Land I have more personal fun at. So... And, I, and if we could do more whale lands, and if we could bring some elements of LTX to whale land, like maybe at a whale land, we have a, 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 a tech midway, like we had at LTX, or, you know, some of the, the con evil, you know, games or, or things like that. Like, I, I think there's ways for us to make whale land really amazing. You could still even potentially have, like, the, the uh, water cooling educational workshop sure. thing. Totally. Like, if someone, like, a rod... Yeah. came up um you know there's no reason why we couldn't you know do something like that okay yeah at this whale land uh we're going to be doing tube bending 101 yeah and maybe it doesn't run the whole time because maybe rod wants to play some games too yeah but like and maybe someone like rod actually gets to play games for a change yeah i'm not convinced he actually plays games i think he just like builds cool computers no, i thought he was really into wasn't it war thunder or something i don't know i've never seen him actually play a game but i've seen him build a lot of cool computers i've seen him play that's games. all i'm saying that's I've, all i'm I've saying i've seen him play games i've, I've seen, seen him, build, I've seen him do both i've seen him build far more cool computers than saw, play games i saw him build a computer that was on fire let's see if, he, let's see if he's was, in the chat that's pretty sick he says he says he says yes <laughs> yeah i'm not sure what he's responding to exactly because <laughs> of the fair. chat delay <laughs> But definitely, yes. My dad says there should be quarterly whale lands. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Rob, I'm on it. Okay. <laughs> We're working on it. We need a facility first. Jeez. Excitement is high. Um, so, yeah, I, um, this, was, uh, this was a super emotional decision for... I shouldn't say decision for me because I didn't make the decision. I was involved in the decision. I... I laid out my points. I ultimately did advocate against future LTXs just for, look, I mean, I, okay, I, I prop, maybe I'm speaking out of turn here. Um, Colton basically said point blank, if we're doing LTX again, I, I can't do this. Mm. I don't blame him. It like, it, it's, 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 it's brutal. Um, and, and, and so it's like, it's not, it's not just like, I, I have, I have said the whole, so he, he was against, I was for, I have said the whole time though, that I'm happily voting for as someone who had nothing to do with any of the work that was involved in it. I think my vote was probably like the least valuable out of all of them. Um, because I was the least attached out of everyone, I think genuinely. Um, so it's easy for me to say, yeah, we should keep doing it. I had some arguments which were like, it was profitable and getting cons to a profitable point is very difficult yeah. and cons tend to have natural inherent growth and become very highly profitable on the high end. And I do think we were trending in that direction. Um, and there were a lot of like financial efficiency things that we, I think did quite poorly with this time around. We could have saved more money. We could have made more money both at the same time, all this kind of stuff. But yeah, all the work and stuff involved. And, and there is still the opportunity cost. And min-maxing the work and profit was never what LTX was about. Yeah. And so I feel like you're right. The con could have become a huge profit center. You are right. 
but it wouldn't have been LTX anymore. And that was a big part of... I think it could still be... I think it would be a very, very difficult path to navigate. Yeah, and potentially not worth it. And maybe Whale Land is how we can keep and that maybe, yeah. fun, small I community do, feel. I do like, I, I think it's pretty cool that there's a plan instead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, because... Just dropping it and be like, guess we're never doing it again would kind of suck. Which I also didn't say. Yes. I said we are not doing 2024. Yeah. Um, uh, but like, yeah, Whale Land, the fact that we will have a facility that we like know the people who own it means that the rate we'll be paying is, I don't know, nothing, <laughs> uh, means that we can just, we can price the tickets at something that we feel is, is, is the not, very least reasonable, not what the market will bear, yeah. but like reasonable, but also, you know, we need to make sure the time makes sense for our, our team to put work into it and make it a really cool event. <laughs> um, but not worry about pinching pennies. So we can just make it a really cool event and just make it fun, right? Oh, Sean, sorry, I'm going to derail slightly. I just, Sean LMG in Floatplane Chat just spoke. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if I should or could name him. Yeah, uh, that was like two weeks ago, I think. Yeah, so he told me that I can. I also asked if I could give the background there, and he said yes. Oh, sure, so yeah, So this cool. is Whaler99 from the forum. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's our new IT person at Linus Media Group. Um, Not even that new anymore. I mean, hasn't he been here almost six months now or something? Somewhere around that. Yeah, yeah I think been so. Been here for a bit. Yeah, it's been hard to keep that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's like, the, I've wanted like, to refer to him on the show as Whaler. Like, oh, 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 I don't nope. want to mention that. But yeah, yeah <laughs> so, some people might actually know Sean if you've been around the forum, um, especially in the earlier days of the forum, um, if, you, if you've seen Whaler99 around. Um, that's him. So yeah, I don't remember what I was referencing, but I wasn't sure if I could name him, and now I do know, and that's that's Sean. So yeah, yeah. So he, he actually like reports to Luke. Yeah, um, which so, is... so he sort of used to as a mod back <laughs> yeah. in like 2012 or yeah. whenever he first started working. He was with one me of on the, the first forum. mods. Yes, like freaking. He's OG. like actually one of the ogiest. Yeah, <laughs> um, forum people ever. Yeah, um, but yeah, he he just said Whaler Land. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he'll be he'll be uh, probably helping us out with getting that set up once he gets his poor like head out from under the water of like <laughs> our it's, IT it's tech debt. Rough. You're gonna you're gonna like the new disaster recovery doc. Oh yeah, it's like wicked. How many how many pages is it? He's 200. watching. 200 what? it's more than 200 right yeah yeah what yeah it's for everything oh is there a disaster okay. solutions what happens if uh when show and goes it's like down? very clickable so you I can like written that jump one to different parts of it and all that kind of stuff <laughs> cool. 210 yeah. yeah 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 hell yeah heck yeah. yeah exciting yeah it's cool it's good anyways um, yeah, so that's sad, but there is the good news of uh, Whale Lands. More and more awesomer. And I'm sure there'll be more details on that in the uh, future. There was a couple comments from some of the people who worked on the Mom and Pop Computer Shop video. By the way, uh, Tanner, who uh, who helped coordinate everything, is like the, the writer for the video, uh, said that the store owner, Keith, was even funnier off camera. This is so true. I, that's one of the things that drives me crazy when I'm working with amateur talents is they'll say something hilarious. I'll be like, okay, free. Okay, do that again. And like, it's never quite, it's Can't never quite the quite same. The yeah. Same way. yeah. And like, that's something that takes a lot of practice. Um, and is there something about just having a camera pointed at you? It just kind of stiffens you up, right? It makes you feel unnatural. And overall, he did great. Um, but yeah, he was even funnier off camera. And Hoffman, uh, who, who was the editor for it, I cannot believe how fast Hoffman turned that around. <laughs> that was like a two day edit. Whoa. Yeah, no, 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 no. We, this is one of the first videos that we've released post-production break that actually was shot post-production break. <laughs> we shot this at, on, um, oh man, was it Thursday of last week? I, I don't, I don't remember exactly when we shot it. Uh, crud. Uh, it should be on my, should be on my calendar. 
I think it was I think it was Thursday of last week. Surely it wasn't Friday. No, it couldn't have been Friday. Uh, yeah, I think it was Thursday of last week. Definitely wasn't Tuesday. And we released it like that weekend. Uh, it must have been because the sponsor asked for a rush edit on it or something like that. Because we told Keith too. We were like, hey, yeah, it's going to be probably a few weeks. Because that's generally how long something like that would take to make its way through the queue. But uh, yeah, Hoffman said the footage was extremely hard to condense because there was so much good material and there was a lot more items that we didn't show. Uh, we typically run audio continuously and Keith was so funny that occasionally while reviewing the audio, you'd hear tons of laughter, followed by David hurriedly trying to get the camera running. Um, passing pedestrians kept trying to poke their heads in to figure out what all the chaos was about. Uh, we also filmed the back of the shot, uh, the back of the shop but wound up cutting it for time. Uh, Tander had a big list of games, but Linus kept making up his own rules <laughs> on the fly. Okay, that's true. <laughs> I mean, that sounds Adam, like a Linus thing. Yeah, to do. it sounds like a Linus thing to do. <laughs> um, discussion question was, what were the best parts of the shoot that didn't make the cut? I think some of the best ones were some of the haggling uh, between me and Keith. Um, there, there were some. I think in the final cut of the video, Hoffman was going for a bit of a tone. Uh, a tone of... You know, me mostly going along with everything, but there were definitely times when I did push back more and, and we did negotiate a bit more. Um, I think Hoffman did a great job, though, of keeping in all the most important gambling because that was by far when I was watching it. I don't even want to spoil it, but the one big, really impactful role was like <laughs> the critical role. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. I'm going to be I'm going to be completely forthright with you. There's only two times in my life that I have fainted or almost fainted, both while being uh both while having blood drawn. Uh because I am what's apparently the technical term is uh a fainter. Uh which basically means that when your skin is punctured, your body immediately goes into protective, I must not lose all my blood mode, and all the blood drains from your extremities, and is like, I'm gonna stay here now. Um, <laughs> so when, when I'm getting blood drawn, like my, my hands go ice cold, and they'll be like in there with the needle, and it, it doesn't bother me, I, I don't care. But it's like, they're like, hello? Can, can, like it's, it just stops flowing. <laughs> There's no pressure, they just can't get it. Wow. Um, I do not have that problem. Yeah, so anyway, um, I, I found this out when I was really sick with something. It was like back in the swine flu days or something stupid like that, but very pre-COVID, the, the, the old you know flu everyone was worried about. Um, so it was back in those days, and I was like quite sick, like in a weakened state already, and I had to get blood drawn. And I'm sitting in the chair, and I start to kind of move, and the, the nurse, poor thing, she must have been about 85 pounds soaking wet, basically goes, whoa, 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 I can't hold you. You put your head between your knees. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and I, I managed to avoid passing out. And then the second time, it was for some life insurance thing. They had to draw blood from me. And um, I started to go dark. And I, like, went over to, I had my, like, love sack, like, giant beanbag pillow in the, in the living room. And I was in the dining room at the old place. And I, like, went down and went on to the love sack thing. And... I like closed my eyes for a second and then I was totally fine. I talked to the guy and he goes, you've been passed out for five minutes. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Didn't know that. So that's the one time I fainted. During this shoot, I was in a near fainted state three times from just stress. It was very intense. There was a more probably more so physical what? there was more physical activity than you guys probably realized yeah. like watching a video like that because I'm climbing up on Moving counters I'm bringing, yeah. like I'm 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 doing a lot it's it's a different I had one of our one of our uh, subjects for um, the tech upgrade series that we do someone internal who sees a lot of footage what's up oh there's an ant huge one see ya see you later buddy. Um, <laughs> who sees a lot of footage but doesn't participate in a lot of videos, messaged me afterward, after we did theirs, and basically goes, I don't know how you do this every day. <laughs> like, I am wiped. I, I just, I, I can't. It's draining. Yeah, it's... it's Draining on a lot of levels. Being on is, is, is quite exhausting. And, uh, you know, when you're working in an unfamiliar environment with unfamiliar people... Um, you know, a big part of the host's job is to make everyone else around them look good 
and look really talented as a host. And so it's a lot of things for me to keep track of when I'm trying to drive a video like that forward. And then the other big one is I didn't even know how much the sponsorship was. I, I had actually no idea. So I had no idea what the running total was because I had a lot of other things to keep track of. And so particularly, um, you know, when I would stop and breathe for a second, I don't think I drank any water that day because I like forgot my water bottle or something. So that was probably a, a major factor. But there were multiple times that day when I was just like, okay, is this shoot going okay? Is everything okay? Uh, what is happening right now? And the one time I actually started to feel blackness come in around my vision was right before the throw. Because <laughs> I was just, I was so stressed. Like, I, I don't, I think you know that I'm not much of a gambler. No. One in the hand Neither is worth 500 in the bush for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. And so <laughs> I, I played a bit of a character in this video. You know, the, the, the gambling man. I want to roll for it, yeah. Yeah, but that is not my personality at all. I think that's something a lot of people don't realize is from one video to the next, sometimes I'll be playing a slightly different character because that's what the content calls for. Um, and so I played... You did it well. I played the, like, cavalier gambling man. <sighs> but that is extremely stressful for me. I did notice that through the course of the video, the game's... Uh, start becoming more and more skill based. Oh, that wasn't intentional, actually. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't, but I also uh, fully believe that your brain in the moment was like, this game sounds more fun. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, I mean, skill didn't work out great for me at the beginning. You saw that putt. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that just looked hard to do. You saw the putt, you saw the darts. So yeah. just because I, I didn't necessarily the win darts skill game? games. You know what didn't make it into the edit was the pre-throw. He wanted a practice throw. I nailed the practice throw and then freaking flubbed. You guys looked so bad. Okay, if you game. tried that dart set, though, you'd I, understand. That's what I assumed while I was watching yeah, it. Yeah, they were dollar store. I was store. like, this is astronomically bad. They were dollar store darts. <laughs> okay. Yes. They had no weight. Not, not that I'm, like, I'm bad at darts, but like... I know. I just you had to whip them though. Yeah, watching you guys do it, I was like, "What?" There was no weight to them, Keith. It, I think it took him three times to get it to stick in, but you didn't see that part because that wasn't in the final cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that video was. Uh, it was a good video. People should watch it. Yeah, it was really stressful though. Scrapyard Wars had better darts. We had darts in Scrapyard Wars. Maybe. We've done a lot. Seems like the kind of thing we would do. Channel Super Fun, I think, had darts at some point. Oh, yeah. Definitely had lawn darts. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, do you have more topics? We kind of already touched on Meteor Lake. We kind of already touched on Neuralink. human trials. Yeah. Um, the ROG Ally base model is coming. It's much slower. Hmm. It uses the Z1 instead of the Z1 Extreme. Uh, I'm, I'm planning to do a review because I've been using my ROG Ally a lot. Oh, good. Oh, this is really frustrating. Uh, YouTube made a, made a policy change allowing channels to change their names um, <laughs> without changing the display name on their Google account. So hackers are now able to easily disguise what channel they've taken over, frustrating attempts to identify and contact the channel's true owner. While changing a channel's name will remove any verified badge associated with the channel, forcing forcing creators to apply for reinstatement. Uh, I don't. That's a sentence fragment. That's okay. We tried. However, not all valuable hacking targets have verification badges, such as strategy game streamer Das Tactic, whose channel was hacked and so thoroughly changed that it was only identifiable because his store was still up. Das Tactic is back in charge of his account now, following assistance from YouTube. Uh, one challenge was trying to communicate with his community. Um, because so much of his online life was connected into his hacked Google account, though thankfully not his Twitter or Discord. This wow. is wild. So this is what a channel that's hacked could look like now. Just completely unidentifiable. Unbelievable. That's rough. Could Google not, at least not make things worse? I feel like this is one of those like one hand not talking to the other situations. And that's probably the most optimistic possible interpretation of what happened with Unity. 
who has walked back their uh, pricing scheme. Yeah. They released a public apology and made significant revisions to their proposed pricing changes. Uh, the recap is last week they announced a 20 cent per download fee on Unity based games that had made over $200,000 in revenue a year and had over 200,000 lifetime downloads. In response, many indie developers threatened to withdraw their games from sale and migrate to another engine for current and future projects. Their new pricing plan doubles the minimum threshold on revenue before charges uh, from, oh, it doubles the minimum threshold before charges from 200k to 1 million a year that's not double but yeah oh i read that in the pre-show and i was like what okay well basically it ups the minimum threshold for revenue uh games published in the past under a previous version of unity will no longer be subject to the new fee which is how it should have worked in the first place how can you possibly unilaterally change a deal that's not how that works uh developers will also be able to choose between the fee or paying 2.5 percent of their gross revenue instead Uh, Last week, Unity claimed that they would assess how much developers owed through an unclear proprietary method leading to speculation of potential DRM and security issues. Now, Unity says they will allow developers to self-report these numbers. I just hope they follow through on all of this and we don't see any of that same kind of behavior again. Is it time to switch to End Show After Dark, Dan? Okay. Let's do it. Just walks past the camera. What a pro. Okay. Merch messages. I'm, I'm starting kidding. at the top of potential. Sure. I mean, we can probably just answer most of them. There's uh, there's not too many this week. Okay. Yeah, the potential ones are more like directed uh, at you guys personally, I think. Um, okay, well, let's start at the top here. Hey, oh, I just donated a bunch of my icebreakers because I couldn't stand how itchy they were on my smooth, supple skin. On a scale of one to sandpaper, what's the itch factor on the LTT Merino Tees? I'm happy with them for Merino tees, but they are still Merino tees. If you like soft fabric on your smooth, supple skin, just get our regular tees. They're great, or better yet, pick up one of the RGB ones. That is probably the softest shirt on the store. And it's available in uh, more than one color now. So, yeah, just go go, go get that. Just load up those. They're, they are by far... The, here, I should probably just... Oh, man, I just realized we never even showed the photos for the for the onesie it's always fun seeing the team <laughs> the Shrad from the business team sarah from the design team alama day from the fashion team dennis from the bothering me team <laughs> more sarah lots of fun adam <laughs> what is this a group oh we do group photos now okay got a bunch of the business team that's actually really cool <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a family photo. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Um, so yeah, the onesies, uh, the reversible bomber jackets from last week, and the merino t-shirt from last week. So the one you want, if you want just like the softest, softest thing for your supple skin, is this one. Oh, I don't see different colors. Oh, are the? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Here it is in gray. So yeah, it's this shirt. It's so comfy. Are you aware of any tech projects similar to VLC that have chosen to remain independent despite receiving numerous purchase offers and strictly refrain from tracking any data from their users? Honestly, it's not something that I personally pay close enough attention to. No, me neither. I mean, I would imagine like OBS has probably was... received offers for purchase and <laughs> that was so far as well. they remain completely independent and don't appear to be doing any kind of tracking of anyone's use, even though like... Man, the amount, the, the kind of very valuable, the kind of data that flows through OBS from the streamers themselves, from any of the any of the things that are hooked into it, like every merch m- message. No, no, it doesn't actually, because that's just a um, like essentially like a web capture window or something like that, right? Okay, it's literally just a browser source. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm sure that they could. I'm sure that if they were um, evil enough, they could engineer OBS in such a way that the only way to hook something in would have to make it like plain text readable to OBS or something. I don't know. Um, but no, OBS just is, is cute. Hey, Linus, I see you flipping around a precision screwdriver. Care to show it off? Yeah, I showed it earlier in the show, so you might just have to rewind. Uh, um, that might have been the pre-show, actually. Oh. Oh, well, then you might just have to get Maybe. float plane and watch it there. Oh, okay. Ha, get ha, ha, get float him. plane. Okay, no, hold on, hold on. Get out of here. I, uh, 
Is it in your other pants? I appear to have misplaced it. I'm sorry. Uh, You will definitely see more of it in the future. Good morning, DLL. Back when Alex had his tech upgrade, he mentioned that you got an order for 5 million face shields from the Canadian government. Is that a story you can share? I, I don't know that it was a formal order so much as it was that they were they wanted as many of them as they could get from anywhere, and we had publicly offered to help, and I think they misinterpreted our manufacturing capacity with those Prusa printers that, hey, again, you know, we haven't forgotten. Shout out Prusa for sending over. Uh, I think they just overestimated our capacity for creating face shields. Um, and it was, you know, we basically clarified and uh, we sent as much as we could. And um, then we both moved on. <laughs> Hi, DLL. I'm a future teacher and was wondering if there is any tech in its early days that you think will become the norm for schools in the future that I should learn now. I would basically just keep my eye out on anything that your students are using. Like, it's not even as, it's not even, in my opinion, it's not even the, like, augmented reality and and AI that is going to change things so much, uh, or that will be as day-to-day relevant to you as just things like understanding what Discord is and how it works and how they're communicating with each other and, and interacting. I think that... um it's been a huge advantage for me and Yvonne as parents to not just know how our kids are communicating, but introduce them to things like Discord, where we can be in the Discords they're in and keep an eye on what they're talking to their friends about. Obviously, that's going to be less relevant as they get into their teenage years. But when, for young kids, uh, keeping them safe online, um, it can be a real challenge if you don't know what they're doing. Um, but I mean, obviously, that's not necessarily a teacher's role, but I still think that understanding... Meeting the kids where they are is um, more important than just trying, is, is more effective than trying to bring them to where you are. Hello, my dudes. Will the so, Noctua Edition screwdriver be available through Noctua in Europe? I, I believe that is the plan. Um, so I think, I think their plan is to, I, I have no idea how the finances would work for this, but I think their plan is to essentially carry the screwdriver however that would look. But you'd have to, honestly, the better way to get information about that would be to ask Noctua because they know better than I do. My husband has watched you since the NCIX days. What is your opinion on tech leaks? Do you think it's affecting buying of new tech? Absolutely. I mean, I I think that leaks can impact the demand for the older item. I think that leaks can do a lot to generate hype and generate additional news cycles that can amplify the news around an upcoming launch. Uh, Sometimes I really do feel like leaks are probably intentional. Other times they really do look, you know, too early, too much impact on the old product to be, to be worth it. And they do look unintentional. Um, Sometimes I I feel like leaks are, um, no matter the cost in terms of your own product lineup, just to damage someone else, just to make sure that, no, there's there's absolutely no air for oh, there's hype growing for somebody else. Whoa. Yeah, let's let's leak something that's coming up. I, I think yeah. it can be very tactical. I so I also think it can be very accidental. I think it can just be passionate people who are excited to talk about what they're working on in a bar and being overheard. I um, that's happened. It's, ju- it, it's just it's just part of it's just part of the territory. Okay, let's move into some potentials. Um, let's see. I just curated one of them out. Oh, okay. I will read that one instead. Um, hey, DLL, it's currently 4 a.m. I just got Starfield bundled with a G502X mouse. What was the best product and game bundle you ever got? My favorite was Battlefield 4 with an AMD GPU. By the way, I love my Uncle Linus bottle. Ooh. I think it was the, like, Batman bundle. The Arkham Asylum one? Yeah. That was a good bundle. Uh, but there were some really wild bundles before... Like I, I got um, so I got Half Life Two with my All in Wonder ninety six hundred Pro, which was hilarious because by the time the game came out, I had already upgraded my GPU. <laughs> there was some, there was a while there where there was bundles of like four games, and I think like be- it got kind of crazy. I think anyone who got Half Life Two got the whole orange box. Whoa, that's pretty I sick. don't actually remember. Hold on, Radeon ninety eight hundred 
Half Life Two bundle orange box. Is am I going to be able to find an article about this? Uh, I'm pretty sure I got an orange box code. I'm I'm. ATI offers bonus to Half Life Two bundle buyers. Okay, here we go. Here we go. You got classic Valve shooters until the Half Life sequel shipped. So maybe it wasn't orange box. Oh, you got the Valve Premier Pack. Okay, that's that's I think it. But that's then, pretty crazy. but then uh, didn't Half Life Two come with Orange yeah. Box? Oh, I don't remember. Now, Orange Box launched after Half Life Two, and that included like Portal and things like that too, right? Did it? Portal, TF Two. That was way later than. Uh, okay, Half -Life okay, yeah, maybe I'm mistaken. Half Life Two was something like 2004. So maybe it was just maybe it was just the older games that came with it. But there were definitely times when. Aside from official bundles, um, stores would have, like, because it used to be physical codes, right? So they would have a ton of codes left over, and they would they just slip, have a stack of them. They'd slip in, like, they'd, they'd pile up bundles on products they needed to move. So I, I had taken advantage of stuff like that in the past as well. Yeah. Man, game bundles used to be... So sick. So sick. Now they're just like, eh. Eh. Let's see. What cancelled video project do you must, most wish you could have completed and released, and why did you have to cancel it? Um, we don't cancel that much so much as we kind of reach a, a non-viable point and, and don't move forward with it. Uh, I'd say one that I'm, I'm really disappointed we didn't do was the rackification of the land center upstairs because our intention was to have that be kind of like what I did with the land center at my house, but run like a big radiator to the roof and bring back whole room water cooling. Uh, at one point, I had also wanted to plumb water, um, water cooling into the editing den and have all the editing machines water cooled off of, you know, just like plumbing from the walls, just like we did in whole room water cooling. With the layout they have now, it wouldn't make any sense anyway, because they're all over the room instead of just down the two walls. But um, I think that would have been super cool to like bring back whole room water cooling in a big way. I'd like to set up something like that at the lab so they just have water available to cool things when they need it. But also I think they probably don't need it. I like quick disconnects on the desk. Yeah. That would be sick. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, LDL. Linus, a couple weeks ago you mentioned that you're more of a textured eater. What is your, fa what is your opinion on Ben and Jerry's ice cream? Uh, I had it. am too cheap to yeah. buy really expensive ice cream. <laughs> so I curated this because I was like, he's probably never even had I it. I have tried it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't remember. Like, I've probably tried Ben and Jerry's once in my life or something. Yeah. It's like, a, but it, it's like 100 grams. You can yeah, get a kilogram like, at Superstore for yeah, like the same price. I, I just, I, I don't know. I can't. The, the, my, the maximum for me is I'll, I'll spring for like Briars. But like, as soon as you get into like Hagen Dazs territory, Dude, Briars but, French Vanilla is like, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty all right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, my guilty pleasure ice cream is just like no name Neapolitan anyway. So I'm That's clearly so a Philistine. It's like five dollars for a for a bathtub. Like yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey, LLD, was wondering what is all your personal favorite LTD store hoodie or jacket that you've ever done? Personally, probably the short circuit one. P.S. Bring back the swacket. Favorite we've ever done. I know mine. Man, I really like the tie dye LTX 23 hoodie. It's really good. It's really good. And I am I am somewhat particular about. I'm I'm not a huge fan. I like zippers. Mm, yep. Yeah. But it's it's really good though. Yeah, that's the one in my backpack right now. Like that's the one I'm dailying right now. What about you? This guy. Really? That's not really a hoodie, but yeah, it's it's an or jacket. Or jacket. Oh, okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's a it's a really nice jacket. It's like a really nice jacket. I know. I've shown it to people that are are like clothing people. Like and I've I've been like, just put it on. I'm not going to tell you like where I got it from or anything. Just put it. What do you think? Because like you don't expect me to have super nice clothes no, out of nowhere. Don't. Um, so I just try it and they're like, wow, it's like actually really good. And they're like checking it out. What, what, what is it? I'm like, lol. <laughs> LTTstore.com, baby. I had, I was at the gym yesterday 
and I, I went uh, to go into the pool after working out, and I put my water bottle down on like where you put your stuff when you're changing to get into the pool, and some dude walked by and was like, "That's a sick water bottle." Nice. I was like, Th- "Thanks, man." And he's like, "Is it a whatever?" And said some brand I don't remember what it was. And I was like, "No, it's a, uh, it's an LTT," and he was like, "Huh?" <laughs> so you're saying we need to invest more marketing in our like top of funnel awareness uh, maybe maybe yeah. yeah yeah all right yeah you might you might sell some water bottles to gym bros if they even know what it is excellent yeah. he's like it's huge that's awesome yeah <laughs> it's like yeah it's sweet hey dll i know you play supreme commander forged alliance forever but what is your opinion on supreme commander 2 the gameplay and story um, I never played Subcom 2 because I heard it's bad. So I, I was a sheeple and I didn't play it. <laughs> Sorry. Have things felt different for you or your staff now that it's been a month since the week uh, plus break? Have you realized noticeable improvements from your new processes and content schedule? I don't know. Why doesn't the team answer that? There's a couple members of the team. I don't know if Luke's going to have a lot to contribute to that. Actually, I don't know if Dan's going to have a lot to contribute to that. Okay, I guess I'll talk. Um, <laughs> I don't wow, think you're productive. wrong. What? Neither of you work on the production you're, you're, you're literally just a hilarious path to go down. That, that is exactly what my response was going to be, too. Like, nothing changed. Nobody yeah. talked to me as much. I was more productive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I think that there's been changes, but I also think that the public perception of the changes has been much greater than what the actual changes have been. I think not that to d- diminish the effort that's gone into the changes. And... But we were putting in a lot of effort before. I think that's one of the things that people are kind of. There was a lot of changes that were about. asked for that were already in motion. It's like, hey, you guys are not doing good enough. Hey, you're like working the team too hard and i'm sitting here going okay which, which one is it yes we're working really hard and we're trying to do better and that's that was already what we were trying to do um and you know it's obvious that there were some communication breakdowns that were taking place i think that's the biggest thing is we we broke down a lot of barriers in interteam meetings and we've we've added a lot of um I'll also throw in here, yeah. we absolutely have our communications problems, and I know of a few that I'm working on as well. Yeah. Um, but if you ask like anyone that works at any company of a size that's more than like five people, people, and you ask them like, what problems does your company have? Oh, communication sucks. It's like, yeah. Things happen, and I think that there there are a lot of things that we can do better. Yeah, of course there are. For sure, I'm of not trying to are. like you know dodge that. There's things no, that we need to do and and that's the thing is like we've I don't think we've ever pretended that we operate perfectly smoothly internally. I no. think that one of the things that we do do sometimes to our detriment is we are extremely transparent about our problems. Um, and so, you know, yeah, here I am, here I am talking about, yeah, some of the challenges and uh, some of the things that we're doing to improve. And I'm going to tell you guys up front, like, it's not perfect. It's, it's going to take a lot of time. Um, the, the, the first week back, honestly, I think we had some of the most disastrous shoots that we had had in many, many months. Um, and not because we didn't have enough time, just because we had a lot of new processes to work out and it is not simple trying to do what we do believe it or not if you know the solution and it's super easy and obvious you don't know the solution it's not that easy it's not that obvious there's a lot of moving parts and um you know it's it's one of those things that um you know i feel like people have to people have to experience people have to live to understand and so i don't expect everybody to understand it but um Overall, I, I, I think that, you know, it's been motivating. I think it's been exciting for people to spend more time talking to other people, um, which has been a personal source of frustration because that's something that I had been advocating for a lot. Um, and then all of a sudden, now it's everybody's idea. So now we're going to do it. It's like, okay. Uh, <laughs> like, sure. It's like, you should be talking to this team regularly. It's like... Okay, but we need like a week shutdown in order to like 
internalize that. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? You know, part of it too is that it's, yeah, it's not that simple. It's just like a lot of the time. And sometimes it's process change, not just, yeah, yeah, I want to do this. Yeah. Thing. And, and sometimes someone can say something. You go, yeah, that's a good idea. And I should do that. But until there's like a, hey, you know, wake up moment. You're just, you just, you kind of keep doing things the way that you did them before, right? And that's... Um, Especially when people are heavily tasked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, I'm, and I've never claimed that we don't work hard. Never. Um, we do. So I'm optimistic. That's what I'll say in yeah. summary. Yeah. Yeah. Just got a couple of potentials left. You guys want to answer that or should we curate them? Uh, let me have a look. Yeah. Oh, well, we got to curate this one. Hey, DLL, my hubby and I were in the LTX vid as two gamers, one CPU. Nice. The PC is a windowless. Is in. Is in a windowless basement room with our server and run through a Thunderbolt cable back to the gaming room. Any tech tips on cooling without a pool? Yeah. So um, believe it or not, that stupid radiator setup that we had in one of the parts of whole pool water cooling, uh, where Alex and I put one radiator outside, it's just a simple car radiator with some ran with, like a random Walmart box fan on it. And then one inside and then a tube running through the wall. That actually worked probably better to cool the room than what I just did. Bearing in mind, of course, that what I just did added net new heat that it then removed. So yeah, it like yeah. effectively did nothing. Yeah. But just taking that radiator and cooling it outside and then heating. So heating the water inside with the hot air and then dissipating that heat to the outside worked pretty great. And I actually had kind of thought at that time, you know, maybe this whole pool water cooling thing is kind of stupid. And I should just do this because... With whole pool water cooling, I can't go sub-ambient. But with a waterproof fan and some kind of misting system, I could. So I could use like phase, I could use evaporative cooling as long as uh, as long as water is plentiful in your area or something like that. You could use evaporative cooling to actually go sub-ambient on that radiator outside. So I mean, essentially it's always just how to move heat and water tubes are a really effective way to move heat. However, I will say this, I, I don't think that any of this is going to be cost effective. So I would only do it if it's for fun. Uh, hi team, please tell a story about a time you have felt like a Sims character. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't, I don't really get this. Why'd you curate it then? I didn't. I didn't curate it. Dan did. Oh, I okay. watched it happen. Fine. Okay, time. then go, Dan. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, bright guy. Right now. Yeah. Why does he have so much light? We don't have any light. Yeah. I got three mortars pointing at my face. I can see nothing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was a. It was a one that was an incoming. I thought you guys might be able to. What's, answer so it. what? What was that? I don't. I, I, I was since like since controlled was... by another entity. Um, all the time. <laughs> Con right, constantly <laughs> okay come I'm, back dan go to work. and you're gone go to work must, and you're here must and you're improved gone. career i always say that i'm piloting a go toddler to, that i can't control go to gym strength increase <laughs> yeah there you go eat i'm 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 controlled by societal Sleep. pressures play chess intelligence increase always fighting back uh last one i've got here hello from bowling green ohio linus have you liked the gr corolla so far and what are your thoughts on Toyota's six-speed intelligent manual transition? Excuse me. I don't have uh, a lot of thoughts on intelligent transmissions because I'm really not much of a car guy, but the GR was a blast. I didn't end up buying one. We only played around with the press car and did the review. Um, I just, I can't justify having more than one car, and I'm not going to swap out the Taycan for it, given that I already have the Taycan. If I, if they were both on the market today and I was shopping again, it's pretty fun. I don't know that I would spring for the stupid mobile, but um, yeah, I don't have any thoughts on the transmission, <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, oh, okay. Last one. 
Timestamp guy here. Okay, I can't validate that, but they say they are. I've been designing a WAN show themed LTT screwdriver holder capable of housing all the bits. Thoughts on selling 3D printed projects on LTT store? I'd actually rather not sell them. I mean, if uh, if there's marketplaces where you can list it, I think there's a pretty vibrant. Just do it up. Yeah, I, there's also already some out there. Yeah, uh, LTT. Hold on. I think there's like a surprisingly vibrant accessory ecosystem. Um, there's been some cool ones posted on the Reddits. And I think in some cases, that was people just showing off their cool project. And in other cases, that was people stealth advertising their Etsys and stuff. Uh, because this is definitely a thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, check this out. Oh, wait. No, not this one. Um, mm, stop. We're off the rails here. Yep. LTT screwdriver carrying case. Wow. LTT stubby screwdriver case. Wow. Like, this is this is 1,000% a thing huh. um yeah cool right neat we are gonna probably do our own at some point but you know for the time being it's definitely something that you can get and it's something that you know we are we are at the very least accepting of you know i don't think that we're going to be going out of our way to you know promote this because we might have our own competing products at some point or whatever else we don't want to we don't want to like rug pull anybody but um, we're also not gonna, we're not gonna, you know, be upset about anything. We, we think this is overall really cool. Yeah. Really, really, really cool. And I think that's it. That's it. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Yeah. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. If you're just tuning in, uh, pretty late in the show here, um, just bear in mind the VOD might take a little bit because the show was interrupted. So we have to take those two pieces of the VOD, splice them together, then upload and process. So it's going to take some time, especially on Floatplane. And that's actually like a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See ya. Bye. I'm like so ready for bed right now.